January 7th, 2020. It's now 7.05. Uh, President's Bob Josie, Colin here, Bob Sullivan. And on the agenda tonight, we have 362 Main Street on the sewer connection we're going to talk about. And I have to recruit myself from the uh, meeting because uh, I have the budding property. Colin, you take over? Sure. I think, the, I think there was a, a question regarding... Um, I know we have a meeting. Uh, yeah, but because it's a meeting, but now you're recusing yourself so you don't have a quorum. Oh. <coughs> so well. the board can authorize Colin to kind of act on its behalf. Or yeah, he can't act, but we can discuss but it. Then he can. can discuss yeah. It. You can't take a vote on anything. Right. right. No vote. You can at least discuss it. Just him. discuss the situation. Okay. <coughs> You can still you can still attend, Bob. You can still listen. You're at a bottom, so you have every right to hear what's going on. You had a you had a financial interest in something like that. I don't know if you have a financial interest, no. But as at a butter, you can you can certainly you can certainly listen to but you have an interest in it as well. I just can't decide anything, so I'll talk about it. My understanding. Yeah. All right. Well thank you for coming in. Um, yeah. just, we'll no. start, I guess. So, yeah. um, so the, the there's a pump station down in the back. I don't know if you've taken a look down there to see the little fenced in area. In the parking lot, um, right. in the parking lot area. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's really down there. So before we get going, just probably want to have, just have your name for the record, just right. so it's on the on the tape. Oh. And your wow. name and address. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, Suzanne Devages, 362 Main Street. And I'm Stephen. Oh, what's his name? Stephen Senecandro. Right. Same address. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> so uh, there's been a whole lot of controversy over the pump station that's down and back there, probably since before I started. Um, so it's been kind of a, a ten-year-long thing going on trying to figure out who actually owns that pump station um, and get clarification because the town didn't have any right-of-ways, didn't have anything, so uh, there was a lot of discussions back and forth and ended up in litigation to, to try to clarify it. Um, so it turns out that it's the owner of that mill building there that owns it. <clears throat> so because it's not a town-owned pump station, it's really designed just for that property. Um, we can't find any record as to how you got tied into that pump station, yeah. but um, I guess the, the end point is, is that we need to resolve it because if you look at how your property is and the property is there, to get to that pump station you have to cross other properties and we can't find any easements that you would have to cross those properties either. So if something were to happen to your sewer line, you technically don't have a legal right to service that line to go down, go down to that pump station, nor do you have a right to be using a personal pump station, um, or a private pump station, I say, should say. So that's why we wrote a letter to, you know, we've discussed it several times, um, trying to come up with a solution, um, but because you're down in a hole, there's no, no way to get it gravity flow mm -hmm. to the gravity uh, sewer, sewer system. So the only option is a, a small pump, st pump system. Um, there's multiple throughout the town. I think there's like all down Manchog Street. They don't have the ability to gravity flow. So all those houses down there, like from the church beyond, have a, the same pump setup. Um, so I guess it was the, the commission's agreement or consensus that you know, we would pay for to purchase and right. install the pump station for you. Um, we saw it, we sort of felt as though whether it wasn't <coughs> excuse me that the uh, you guys had purchased the property not with the guaranteed you know, like the sewer line probably went off the road. Right. I didn't even that know was, what a lift station yeah. was. I just right. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that was all done, you know. So the sewage goes up to the road? No, it goes down to the yeah, down yeah. because I thought yeah it'd be so, super up the road but yeah. yeah, so, so I they all cut across that building near the back. There's a sewer main coming down North Street. Right. So down Main Street and then down North Street. Um, 
but his pump station is because he can't gravity, you know, just like you guys can't gravity into into the the town sewer system, so they had to have a pump station put in to pump it from that building up to Main Street in order to have a gravity down. So when that was done, that they, sh they should have had their own pump station at, at some point in the past. Should've, right. So whenever they got sewer, it right. should have been, they just got so, tied in over there. Right. And it very well could have been maybe that the mill owned that building. Right. So I said there must have been, been some agreement, right. mutual agreement that wasn't put in writing. I know you all, you can tie in right. here. Right. Or, or it could have been at the same. At some time, the mill, you know, I went back as far as I could. And, you know, back in early 1900s and stuff, that was all owned by Schuster. And, you know, even the, what's the alternatives? Right. You know, that building... Your property, the where the picket fence and all that stuff is, all that was on. Is alternatives empty now? They're gone. Or? Yeah, they're out of there. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah, they've been gone. I just noticed it because yeah, you know, the wintertime you don't go out too often. But mm -hmm. about uh, November, I went out and I said, "There's no more cars there." You know, in the summertime, I was out on the deck and you know, in and out. No, no one there. Mm -hmm. Although last week there was some, some was cleaning out, look like. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's someone's in between coming in or what. Yeah. But I don't know who owns that building. Yeah. <clears throat> And the alternative zones are now, but they they actually they were in the same boat as as you guys were. But when when they found that out, they immediately put the they put a pump in it. They pump up to the to that. But they did that on their own. And that was because I think they were concerned about they didn't have any easements going to a pump station and dealing. And they had the you know they wanted to get going on their their project, so they just immediately did it, and not get tied up in any litigation. And yeah, because if they want to do something with the building, they agree. Yeah. Right. So I think in your situation, we, we <coughs> did discover that that line from, from your house was going down there, too, what we felt, so the board felt that, you know, in good faith, it's something you guys were probably unaware of, and that we would we would put forth the the uh, the money to put and put that system in for you, the pump station in the front, and, bring, and put that up to the road, then, then you guys would actually own that from that point on. The typical, so I was trying to figure out how it works is, is it, are they usually individually owned or town owned? It's not. Is it not cut? Owned. Individually okay. owned. On the, on That's the, why I didn't understand like why the other one was such a, a back and forth. Then if if they're usually individually owned, yeah. was, at one well, point was it not? I know it's not that myself. But. There's there's larger pump stations. Right. Like we have three of them. We have one down on Gilboa Street because it services all these houses down Gilboa Street. Um, we have one up in Colonial because it was put in when that development went in, and at that time the town agreed. Uh, well, it was before my time, so I'm assuming yeah. the town agreed to when the project went in that, yeah, the town will own the pump station when it's all complete and certified, and they'll, they'll okay. hand it over to the so town. So in some cases, maintain. the town approves it at the time of building, and if not, then... Because there's multiple, multiple <clears throat> private houses on that, where this, okay. this was right. specifically yeah. designed for the mill. So like that yeah. project that's going at the top of North Street, right. that's a, it's a bunch of condos, but it's one lot, so it's a privately owned complex so they have their own private pump station to service all so it'll be 133 right. houses up there. So the so homeowners own it together? Exactly. Yes. There'll be a homeowners association but where yours is a little different because you're a single house tied into a pump station that's on another single parcel. So and part of our agreement <clears throat> with with the the uh, the apartment house is that they didn't want to have to get involved with telling you guys they have to get off the thing they wanted us to handle that and then um, I think primarily the reason is because if they go to do something now well, you know it gets litigated you guys well, like what are you talking about that and then it turns into a right a, well a, a, I wasn't aware that it yeah. was in litigation right. for 10 years I'm just yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. I think the what we're trying to do is look out for your interest and, and make sure that it gets done transition gets done smoothly and not where well, you guys aren't getting dealing with the apartments and getting right well, we appreciate that patient. So we were looking at that, saying trying to get the tra transition as smooth as possible, without, you know, a financial burden on yourself. So, so at right. that point, when it's all complete and done, we're responsible for the maintenance of any breakdown or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, that's on your property, so you're responsible yeah. for that. It actually be on our on her, well, it's their property. Yes, it would be on it be on your property, where it comes out of your house, and then we're, we have to look at the situation. Yeah, we'll have to go down and try to see. Right where your line comes out of the house and what the best route to get up to yeah. up to main north you're right there on that kind of corner so uh, how, uh, how reliable are these pumps how long do they last before they need well, maintenance they've had them <coughs> coming up getting close to 10 yeah. years down here and 
Yeah, I think there was only one person that had an issue one time. Yep. It was a circuit board, and they replaced that. And, you know, I haven't heard any other issues. So that's the E1 pump station. I, I had explained there's a couple. Yeah. Here's some of the paperwork on on the other one that I had mentioned to you. I don't really have any experience with them. I just mm -hmm. know that they're a new, a new, and this, they say this is a, you know, a direct replacement for the E1. You can actually pull the E1. If you put an E1 in, and in the future you wanted to switch over to this, you could pull their, the guts of theirs out and drop this in. So this is just some paperwork on, I think I grab some extra of these. Yeah, so you can take one of those just to, that'll kind of give you an idea how it works. Um, I don't have any paperwork on the E1s, but that's like, I don't know if you had contacted FR Mahoney at all or anything. But No, I mean, I looked up the E1s a little bit online. Yeah. Um, they, is it something about electricity now? Uh, they have a pump. Right? Yeah, it's a pump, yeah. so it'll have to get tied into your so electric. So it's tied to electrical box. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we'll take care of, we'll take care of the whole, getting it all in and installed and getting it up and running oh. on that. Just the... Because what Dave was saying, the E1 is more uh, one is more efficient than something he said the E1. But my brother-in-law was in this, he was talking to us. That's what that. I was going to say, is this one... But one was more economical to run. I think the E1 is probably... Yeah, I, think, I think it was E1, he said, yeah. Because this is a two horsepower and that's a one horsepower. And as I, I was explaining right. to Colin earlier that, you know, this is a little less expensive unit. Mm -hmm. um, it's newer and they're trying to kind of break into that market because E1 kind of has a... Yeah. Yeah, the monopoly they're, on it there. Knows, yeah, yeah they've got thousands of them throughout yeah. the state, and uh, they just kind of have a, a hold on the, the whole market. Uh, I think even when we did the Manchog Street expansion, uh, when we, we put in that whole force main with all those, um, given all those properties down there, the ability to tie in. We didn't put in the pump stations, we just put in the main, and then they have to pay to put in all their own pump stations. So uh, when we did that, when the state approved it, they required it to be an E1 with a specific model number. Oh, well, really? Yeah. So, uh, you know, that was. It's, yeah, I mean, your judgment, you know, it's fine with us, but, you know, we don't, you know, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We just know what we're learning, you know, yeah. tonight and, you yeah. know, recently. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we want to have you come in and, and discuss it yeah. with you. And I mean, I, I had no idea that, you know. Right. Uh, I'm sure you that's, why, that's why I said yeah. it. I've heard of pump stations. We call them pump yeah. stations. Right. Yeah. You know, where, you know, like, well, you have to get the sewage up the hill. Right. But like you're saying, when a lot, of, when a lot of places are tied into it, it's the town, the town does right. it. Right. But on an individual basis, it goes to the homeowner. Goes to the homeowner. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which I never, you know, yeah. I never thought that. And I never thought about it because you know, it was just you know. Yeah. If you think of how the just think of the setup, how it would yeah. work in general. Or you would think like the like, like, town somewhere in like know. on the real right. estate yeah. thing that says, oh, you have a lift station. Like, I don't know if it's required to be there or. Right. I don't know. I mean, it wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they would know now because it would be visible. Then. Yeah, and they would. They would. Yeah, it's only a small. I mean, the top of it is probably only about. It's probably about this big, just it's, like a. Yeah, it's that. So yeah. is it is it raised up uh, like? It's raised up a little bit, but depending on. What yeah, there's a, a there's like a cap. There's a little cover that they put on it, so you can pop the cover off to get to the parts that you would need to get to. Any um, so. Yeah, if you go down Manchon, let me think. What's the one just before Dunleavy's? Uh, um, yeah. The little house there, they have one. You can just it's a little green cap. You can see that out in the front. Yours, I'm guessing, would be in the back. So you wouldn't see it from the front, uh, but it's just a matter of logistics on where it comes out of your house and what's right. easier to do. So um, we would have to take a look at that. And try what's to the out. timeline that you're thinking that it would be done? Um, I mean, we'd like to do it as soon as we can, but right, yeah. depending on frost and weather permitting, you know, what the path is to get it up there. We, you know, we gotta do a little leg work to try to figure out what's going to work best. <clears throat> So, I think it would be the, the the smoothest and easiest transition is we did that. Cause if you choose not to do that, then now you're now you're dealing with a private entity that could. No, oh, no, we want to yeah. do it. Okay. Yeah, and there's already <laughs> been conversations yeah. with them. There's no reason not to do yeah. it. I mean, yeah. you know, like yeah, yeah. yeah. That turns into a legal battle with the them. And the, and I, I, don't, I don't know really what the alternative would be. Like, it, it wouldn't make any sense to, to say I don't want it. Yeah. Well, something. Yeah. Well. Well, just, some people just, would be like, oh, I yeah. want to keep it the way it is, but, yeah. like, I had explained to you. Well, if you're you, offering me a new system, like, I mean, I don't know. I think right. That, 
Right. As and you had said, like, then they could say, like, oh, well, you're responsible for a certain portion. and Right, because I know that that comment had already come up where, you know, they have 19 units and you're a unit, so that'd be, you would technically be responsible for 1 20th of whatever their maintenance and, you know, they could go Whether right. I was or wasn't, I don't want to go through the hassle of... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so no, I mean, this sounds good no. to me. Plus, though, yeah, you know. Using their electricity to pump a, a sewer. Right, so if they want to right. say, oh, you know, for 17 you know, years, you've been using case, it. Maybe some they come back and Right, that's the whole. Yeah. That's so I'd rather sometimes. get on it as soon as possible and right. move forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so whatever they can very good. I agree. So the only thing that I've got is that I've got to check with town council and everything on the logistics of if we need to get some kind of easement in order to get the work done. I'm not exactly sure on that because this is kind of a unique situation. <laughs> Because typically anything that we do, we don't go beyond the property line. Right. Because right. that's, we don't, our insurance and everything, we don't have liability insurance and stuff to cover doing work on private property. Um, but if we subcontract, I'm not sure how that has to happen, whether they can do the work for you and then just bill us. I'm not sure. I got to just clarify that. I just have to get clarification right. on what the, the procedure is to get it done correctly so that if anything happens once going in, everything everyone's covered. <coughs> so the outcome will be it'll be yours and be done just to get a, work through the just the bumps. To get, get through all the bumps there. to get us there. Right. I'm not sure if you're familiar with how difficult it is for a town to get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but we will. Uh, you know, that'll be one of my priorities is trying to get this moving forward and done as soon as we can. Okay. Very Sounds right. good. Very yeah. good. I have no more questions. I'll have it like a home button, you know. Yeah. Well, you no, pretty feel, much. Pretty much. Yeah. have my phone number, so it's pretty much free. straightforward. What's going it is. On, yeah, know, it's pretty straightforward. Know. I understand about yeah. the easement, you know, and the liability and right. all that because it's, it's like anything else happens. You know, if someone's on your property and they get hurt, they can sue you even though it's exactly. Involved. Yeah. So, so we we'll just want to make sure everything's yeah. covered that way. I mean, if you a case where we have to sign off for someone that they can work on that property, you know, right, right, that would be fine too, you know. Yeah, council will spell that out. Yeah, so that. however they tell us we have yeah, to do it, right. we'll just go through those steps and make sure everybody's covered yeah. every way. And you know. we got to make sure they are protected as far as if somebody gets hurt on the property while we're right. doing the work. You know, you guys don't want to be liable, so yeah. you know, we got to make sure everybody's sure. covered properly. All right. So, I think we're, yeah. as soon as we get all that clarified, we'll move forward as quick as we can. to see him other now, so we should know. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions, give Bob's here. Yeah. Good day. Give him a buzz. I, I think I may have given you my cell phone number. Yeah, I have your cell phone number. Yeah, I have your email. So, yeah, you, you can get a hold of me. <laughs> all right. All right. Very good. Well, thank you very thank much you. for coming in. You guys can do the rest of the meeting now. You probably got a long night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> not. But yeah, I think so. Oh, this one's, <laughs> this thank one's you. always a long nice meeting. meeting. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, I know you. How are you doing? Yeah. Good. Good. So, <laughs> yeah, I see your cars out there. Oh, yeah. How many you got? Too many. Oh, twelve. Me <laughs> well, you sold one. Yeah, I sold one. I'm out of twelve now. This on the positions. Oh, wait a minute. Why don't we, before we do that, why don't we read the uh, water and sewer report? Um, right. We didn't actually have that on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have meeting minutes or. Yeah, it, is, it isn't on the agenda. How come? Well, it's still. Huh? Yeah. It's, just a, it's still just the right. technicality of it. Right. that. <coughs> So the monthly sewer report, we had 6.7 inches of rain. Cinegro hauled 113,100 gallons. We had flow of 7,522,560 gallons for an average of 242,662 gallons per day. We wasted 112,175 gallons for an average of 3,619 gallons per day. We used 578 gallons of a gallon and zero gallons of sodium hydroxide, uh, 346 kilowatt hours of electricity, and the river average was 1,091.821 cubic feet per second. Did you forget some? 
Oh. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> and we replaced an Allen pump for SBR number three. And continuing rinsing of the hydro hydrox hydroxide storage tank. And we're preparing for the first quarter toxicity testing, which started today. Questions on the sewer? Got some good river flow. Yeah, yeah I got it. <laughs> if we can only bank it. <laughs> I love the looted knife. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, we just need that. One. What's causing the river flow to be so high? That's so much rain. And yeah. Is it because of that Beaver Dam that breached a little bit? Not that that breach re recently? Yeah. The water level's up pretty high in a res compared to what normal yeah. is. I think we had all that rain and snow and everything. Yeah, rain and snow and everything. Yeah. We've had a lot of rain. Yeah, mm. well, yeah I do. Six inches of rain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Almost seven inches of rain. Oh, yeah, that's. Yeah. All right, for the water report. <coughs> Totals are from November and the work is from December. So total gallons of water pump was six million. Gallons, average of 200,296 200, gallons per day. KOH was 461 gallons. The chlorine used was 386 gallons of batch solution. That equates to 20.44 20 gall 20 gallons of chlorine. Uh, sampling for the month, all the samples came back good. Uh, system repairs, cleaned out clogged pressure switch at booster station. Uh, new Installed new stainless KOH injection close at primary, and a new there was a new service line replacement at 70 Martin. Uh, monthly maintenance, all the generators were serviced, and during that service, or like two days before that service was coming in, the um, generator at primary crapped out. Uh, it looks like the electrical end of it caught on fire. So the whole generator end is junk. Mm. Uh, so I gotta get quotes on a new one. Um, That's just a backup generator, right? Yeah. Uh, you say, you mean, you say so just backup. Yeah, right? yeah, I know, just backup. That's the main. Yeah. That's the main plant where all the brains are that right. controls the whole system. So. Um, without it, we're running everything is else. There's something that we have to for a backup. Right now? No. Nothing. Um, I thought we, well, we had talked about getting a portable one to go. Yeah, we haven't done that yet. That's, yeah. that's, we got to go out to bid and everything to get pricing on that. Mm -hmm. So where was the wire? I'm trying to see that. Where was the, was that the primary? That primary, yeah. Replace generator or primary? Oh, need replacement. No, so need replacement. replacement. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah so, so I think, so. I got a quote. They didn't send it to me, but Matt forwarded it to me. They sent Matt the proposal to repair the existing one mm -hmm. and I want to say it was somewhere around eight I'll have to find the paper I, I thought I had it with me but I want to say it was around eighteen thousand dollars for them to come in and repair the existing one and I would guess it'd be around thirty thousand for a new but we've had multiple issues with that engine not the not the generator end of it but the engine end of it mm -hmm. um didn't come with a expansion tank or anything on the uh, coolant, so we were constantly we had a very small gap between full and where it triggers, saying it's low on coolant, mm -hmm. so it would go into alarm and not run. Um, that was happening a lot more often recently. We put in a, an expansion tank, trying to resolve that issue. I don't know if you guys noticed on one of the bills uh, for reimbursement, Steve had ordered a new radiator cap because that kept failing. I didn't notice. Um, so we had tried multiple things to stop the faults. Um, <coughs> so if you spend you know eighteen thousand dollars to repair the generator end of a twenty-year-old generator, mm. you know. And being the the main brains of the whole water system, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's probably just a better idea to replace that one. 
Who was that a quote from? That's all right, you don't have to get it though. Just uh, so I measure it if the uh, power up. What is it? Power up? Power up generator service? Yeah, so 17,000. Where are they out of? What size? What size is that? Many uh, can you? Uh, I have to tell what uh, size. What's my tells? Um, it's a diesel generator, right? No, it's not diesel. You can't have diesel. Can't yeah. have diesel at the water stations. Oh, propane. So it's yeah. propane. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Got the one that's in there now. It's twenty years old. That's that replaced the original one, I think, didn't it? Probably. Yeah, that probably replaced that engine that was inside that was similar to the one that used to be a turbine where it just right, yeah. drove the, the pump itself. It didn't give you electricity, so I would assume they upgraded that whenever you had to start treatment. Because if you were running that backup engine, you wouldn't have any of the treatment work. Mm -hmm. So I just got this the other day from Matt, so. So I'm going to get a couple of bids anyway. Yeah, to, if you want to try to re replace that end, or well, you'd have to get three bids anyway right, going out to get a replacement generator. Right. But I also need a replacement, not a replacement, but a new tow behind generator. So my thought was if we replace this one, when they do that, I'd like to have it wired for the external plug as well. So if this generator failed, we could use that portable kind of as a backup. The one that's currently up there? Well, no. We don't have Take a portable that, yet. But repair the one that's there and keep no, those. If we buy a new one for primary, yeah. just when they're rewiring and everything, I'd like to wire in that the well, external, that's a good idea oh, the external plug. Yeah. Right, right, just a little wire. Okay, right. right. Just so it's right. a, if all else, you know, kind of a backup to the backup. Mm -hmm. You know, just anytime we're doing something like that, I'd like to get the plugs installed just so that we have that one more backup in case something goes wrong. <clears throat> yeah, that wouldn't cost much to wire that. That's what I mean. That's a, if you're already in that process. Yeah, right. Let me finish skimming through this while you're reviewing yeah, that. Yeah, All right. So four meters replaced, four final reads. Two new connections and new meter installs. Uh, hydrant flow test performed for the sprinkler system at 40 Depot, birdhouse. Uh, salt barrels at Glen Station topped off. New tires installed on the F350. Snow removal for a couple days. Curved off 40 Depot due to a frozen pipe. Uh, it was a pipe or meter. We didn't quite see because there was two and a half feet of water in the basement. We were waiting for him to drain it down before we actually figure out what was frozen and split. Uh, and Steve worked on drafting an SOP for testing the chemical alarms. That was something that uh, came up during the DEP inspection. They want an SOP for doing the, the testing. Uh, they want it so anyone can go in and do the testing, which you know I kind of disagree with because you have, nobody should be in there t testing our alarm systems that doesn't know how to operate the system in the first place. So. Yeah. <clears throat> but so he worked on breaking one of those out. That's it for the water. Questions on that? Yeah. So is this is this up and running? The did they did they do any repair no, to it? No. Nothing? There's no fix on it unless you do that. Okay, there's no no okay. Yeah, it's cool. done. Yeah. So that one I kind of can't wait. Yeah, gotta, that has to get done. I'm going to act on that fairly soon. So I figured we kind of had it planned for buying the portable somewhat near this 
budget, so it should probably be shifted over to that and budget for the portable for the spring. But yeah, it's up to you guys if you want me to get three, two more quotes on trying to get it repaired or. It wouldn't hurt. I mean, it wouldn't hurt. <clears throat> I think we'd have to go anyway by the fall that that statue and uh, anything over 10,000. Is that what the well, number is? I got to get three proposals either way we go. Right. But I'm saying, do you want me to get three proposals to go that way and three proposals to go with a new? Or do you, are you, are you, you guys kind of in consensus this that you should move towards a new? This is what I'm going to repair to generate it. And that's not going to repair the front half. Right. Which that's is not doing anything with the engine. That is only replacing the generator end of it. Are we having a problem with the engine or just the overheating pot? It's the switch. Yeah, it's mostly that. Um, but like I said, it's it's an old gas fired yeah. engine. So. But that replaced the original gas fired engine, right? I would. Th I think the original was a gas that was in the inside. Inside, yeah. yeah. But that, that was, was a propane. That was propane. Yeah. That's what I mean. Original gas, gas and yeah, it was propane. Pro right. Yeah. Well. I think it was a gasoline engine at one point. Oh, really? Then it went to, it went to the... Uh, I can't remember. I think, it, I think it was pro... The one inside was propane. I know yeah. that. Um, Only reason I remember Buff talking about saying that it didn't have the same power as when it was ran off gasoline. Oh, yeah. They probably ran off gasoline, gasoline yeah. originally, yeah. Yeah. Because it didn't have the same power output as that. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just wondering if we... I think Keith ran that. He was probably one of the last ones that actually probably. ran that. Yeah. Yeah. How many um, <clears throat> How many hours on that engine? Oh, Is there a shower meter? There it is. Oh, it's on We've got it all on our records, but I don't have it off the top of my head. Yeah, they didn't write it on here either. Well, we test that, what, once a week? Every week. Once a month? Every week. Well, my, I guess it wouldn't hurt, my opinion would be, just to, if you have them getting a quote on a new one, and have them give you a quote on repair if you get two more. Mm -hmm. Just for the, I mean, because sometimes another set of eyeballs might see something different. Or, or well, it's a cooler engine that's in there, huh? It's a whole Kohler Genset package. I'm guessing that's probably a Chevy 350 engine in there. I think it's 20 years old. Roughly. <clears throat> 20 years old and we run it every every week. Yeah, but I'm so, so, I'm so surprised. It really hasn't... How many hours? Is there any run time? There's an hour meter. On yeah. It. I don't have it off the top of my head. I can get it, though. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be. It's not like, I mean, you run every week, but it's not like it's a continual. Right. Or it should, yeah, or it should just, be going out. I would say, yeah. It's, I mean, it probably has years left in it, but yeah. do you want to spend that's the thing. more than 50% of the cost of a new one right. to repair something that's 20 years old? Yeah, I know it. That's... You know, the, you're at the so you you kind of at that point. It's like, good money yeah, it's bad. almost yeah, it's almost worth yeah. just repairing it. But yeah. I wouldn't get rid of what's there. I just yeah. got to double check because that engine might be the same one that's over at Davis Street. Yeah. Um, so it could potentially be a backup engine for something else. That's the one out right at the corner. Is it around the corner on the front? Well, be in the back when you pulled out the driveway. Yes. It's on right there. Yeah, the one that you see right there. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I put that in. That was, that's been 20 years already. So it's, it's pretty close to that, 18 wow. to 20, something like that. <clears throat> well, I would think we'd probably get the price of both ways. Yeah, the price of both ways and see, and then we'll get an idea of what. I mean, usually the companies are going to service it, but supply them one too, I would think. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they all. They're probably all going to the same vendors, but <laughs> yeah, would, but um, I think if they're going to rebuild the generator, it must have new ones too that they install. It's just a matter of this being a cola generator to service, so it's easier to get three prices on. Mm -hmm. Like Cummings will give you a price for a new generator, like this one out here, or you know, you get a bunch of different brands that will sell you as opposed to companies that are going to work on. Cooler. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think? But for a new one, I wouldn't. I mean, we would have to write a spec, but I'd write. I'd say make sure they're bidding on the same thing. If they right, did. and I would want, you know, the, the 1800 RPM, because there's one company that makes a 3600, but that's just 
It's very it's loud. Fast. It's yeah. a lot of yeah. wear and tear on all the parts. So can we write up specs at the same time or? Yeah. All right. I'll spec it out so when they bid this, they can bid the specs. Yeah. Just make sure you figure out which one that you think is going to be the best one that like the lower lower RPM one. Yeah. So now yeah. the only other question is. Cole has been around for a long time. Yeah. But yeah, Cole is. Cummins has been around for a long time too. I don't know if Cummins would make a guess. Yes. Oh no, that's yeah. diesel out here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I yeah, would almost, Cummings uh, probably don't make gas. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Cummings is probably mainly diesel. Yeah, yeah. Typically, but um, the only other thing is it's 600 volt, so that kind of throws a wrench in it too. Mm. So you get a little, a little tighter market trying to get a 600 volt generator. Um, so then it's a matter of do we look into getting a 480 generator and. They're using a step-up transformer to go back up to 600. I think the only two things in there are the two motors that are 600 volt, the main pump motors, and those are fairly new. So if they were still the old motors, I'd say maybe we should look at just go right to 480 because mm. 600 is getting harder. National Grid keeps kind of hinting that, hey, you guys got to start considering going to 480 instead of 600. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the 480, they have the transformers and everything on the shelf. If somebody hits that 600 volt transformer, mm -hmm. it might take a little longer to, to get it repaired. But Can that be stepped down? A 600 step down to 480? Yeah. Well, step down is easier than stepping up. Oh, okay. So you can step down <clears throat> easy enough. But. But if we go to a 480 generator, I would need to step up in, unless we want to replace all the motors. But then it turns into a little more That's obviously headaches. All about that. It's a little more headaches because when you go 600 to 480, now mm -hmm. your amperage increases. So your wires may have to be bigger. So then it's a matter of you might be rewiring everything. But back when they put all this stuff in, they may very well have oversized all your wires and stuff. So... It would take a little more research to figure out the best. Yeah, I just I mean overall, but I'll get a price that way. I'll get a price to see if they can. Would help you on that with Mass Electric. Uh, I doubt it. They won't tell you how to do it. Okay. No, we would have to have, have to rely on one of these companies. Uh, even them, they they'll give you the generator and tell you what you need, you know, generator wise. But it'd really be like Lafleur coming in saying. Here's your amp draws. Here's what you need for wire. Um, or here's what it's rated for. You know, this is the size you need. This is the wire you need. Here's the upgrades you'd have to do internally. Right. Well, then, everything in the building run on six six hundred. Well, no. So you'd have to change everything. To, it's really only the two motors yeah. for the pumps. Just the two motors. Everything else is one ten. One ten or twenty four volts. So. Yeah. <clears throat> it's yeah, really just the, it's really just the two motors. So. But I know that I've seen the wire in there, and it's a pretty heavy wire for the two motors that are there. But um, they're, they're pretty big motors. So. Well, we talk to talk to uh, Fleur and have him take a look at that first, and yeah, I'll get his recommendation if you go one way or the other and see because it could be if it's this. Yeah, be a good idea. I mean, everybody knows we need to upgrade the electrical in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can't even replace the meter because they don't do those meters anymore. So they still come in. You should go over there and look at the, the electrical meter that's there. By the building? Yeah. Well, it's not on the building. It's inside. So National oh. Grid has to have a key so they can go inside to go read the meter. Yeah. So. Is there any programs out there to read, um, you know, like, you have programs to do the lighting and stuff? Incentives? Yeah. There most likely won't be incentives to do what we need to do. Um, we already took advantage of the incentive to upgrade to the high efficiency motors and the mm -hmm. BFDs, which is why I'm, you know, like I said, if it was still the old one where we had the across the board straight old inefficient motors, but now we already upgraded the motors and the, the drives, so that kind of makes it a little more, yeah, let's not step in the direction of changing out the motors to 480. Mm. Well, that's one thing.
thing that has to happen. Thanks for your work on that. Yep. I saw the email come through on the positions. What, what was? The email oh, I, the positions. That was the email. The, oh, the, the things I said today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said yeah. to me today. Yeah. Oh, that was today. Yeah, today. Um, so that was some quotes. We got positions. So yeah, the, I don't know if you had a chance to read through that, so I just wanted I didn't really go through okay. that. I was get probably the budget stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, we're doing the budget way or earlier than we normally do, so there was a lot of scattering trying to yeah. get things together. Uh, we'll try to stay ahead of it this year. Mm -hmm. I agree it's better to do it yeah. this time, just right. it's a lot more on me trying to pull it together because yeah. I don't have as much information. Well, that's as I have to get it finalized. We just want to get the just get the ball rolling. So we're uh -huh. not, not uh, up against the wall in April. Yeah, so <laughs> that's what I said. Normally, yeah. I'm doing this in <laughs> April. So <laughs> right after the holidays, everything else, trying to put all this together. But um, all right. So yeah. So then I guess the, on the positions, um, so we had had a conversation a little earlier. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's kind of the route you want to go is start off doing the lower position. Yeah, it's easiest to fill, and that was a consensus of the put, get that laborer's position filled, and then that'll help alleviate some of the, you know, the, the minor stuff that these guys are doing, just to get right. an extra the hands. And then I think the, the, the bigger thing is going so, to be identify. That's what I was gonna say. Let's look at, if, if we can just try to kind of quickly go over what positions. Right need to be filled so we have a chief chief operator on the sewer yep and we need an assistant, an assistant chief. chief operator and that is not listed in the in the right. uh, job descriptions that I sent over to you that the personnel board has filed um, they did have they did have in the did you look at the in the, uh, in the so okay sure. just the, they did have in the, in the compensation plan in the grading, they did have a, uh, I think it was the word, water sewer operator. No. So I don't know. Are they thinking Is that water sewer operator or assistant water sewer operator? They had. Uh, In the current or what they had? <laughs> I don't think the job descriptions all matched exactly to what the. Yeah, none of it. The grade the, of. The, there's a lot of. The list that had on this. So little differences, but if we just go through and list out what. Right, it may simply just be. But I, uh, I did get a. Uh, email from Matt. I just read before I came down, so I didn't have really a chance to go through a lot of the cipher. And based on what I read through uh, on Matt's, I don't think we we have to do the job descriptions. I think that's going to go through the way Matt. But I read through it quickly, and he went through some of the things. Um, the job descriptions would be his responsibility. He's just going to come to me for that. So his responsibility, not the commission. I mean, I just I just went through it tonight on the thing because I mean uh, the way the special act was worded, it excluded the employees from on uh, from uh, the jurisdiction of, of it, it excluded the, the water sewer, sewer employees. Department. Oh, the water sewer so it doesn't it doesn't exempt them on the personnel policies. Mm -hmm. So I had to go through it. I just I read through it quickly just right. before I was on the phone. When I was reading. This, I was waiting on the. Phone. Like I said, I've gone through a bunch of it. So I think I think it's I think he's right. I think I think that that it sh that it should be, and the reason why I agree with his position on it is because of the fact that it's got to be consistent with all the other departments. It has to be it has to be a master template. I mean, you can't have one department submitting a job description on a template that doesn't match the other ones. You want to have consistency throughout mm -hmm. the whole all the departments, um, and just for legality purposes, that's his forte. Uh, making sure things are worded properly in the job descriptions, make sure that things are accurate. And then um, I think at that point, then it goes to the rating policy. I'm not sure how that falls. With, I'm sure Matt's going to, because it's an advisory board now. The personnel board is an advisory board, which falls on the pretty, said much, he pretty will, much Matt takes. He will still go to them and, and yeah. present it to them yeah. and get their blessing. Yeah. But. So I think a lot of that is going to be taken off of our shoulders, which I'm fine with. That's 
at all. You say that, but he's going to turn around and come to me and say, all right, right. give me a job description. Yeah. So. Well, we did that before. Where that's, I remember doing it years in 2009, all those first ones. And I think we, we went through and did all those. And then they would, I think council at the time made sure everything was done and worded things, changed some wording on some mm -hmm. things. So I'm not, I'm not. I didn't look through what you had yet. Yeah. So I'll look through it. But like there I said, I know when I came here, there was nothing. Yeah. And that's why I was like, holy crap, I have nothing to go on with any of the employees yeah. here. So I started the process with the personnel board. Yeah. And it turned into kind of a nightmare. Yeah. So, uh, so Matt's gonna, gonna it never got it. completed. Now, didn't we say something about we want to try to increase the salaries on that too? Well, that's, that's a whole separate. That's a thing. separate thing. Yeah, that's got to go that's through the personnel board's rating yeah. system. For that, yeah. But because that's one of the problems we're having. But that's the conversation that needs to be had with them. I, mean, I, went, I went through some of the compensation on the compensation plans. I mean, it's embarrassing. Some of the line they should eliminate some. I mean, one through ten on some of those. <clears throat> Some of those positions shouldn't even exist. I mean, how can you expect somebody to work for $14 an hour and tell them to be professional? Right, yeah. When they're telling you that McDonald's is going to have to pay a minimum of $15 an hour. Yeah, right. right. So, yeah. I mean, a lot of that stuff, they've got we gotta to be, be real. It's going to be updated. Ours wasn't like that, but the, I did read some going through different departments. And yeah, but ours is still low. In some cases, yes. It wasn't, it, I did, did some comparison on other towns, and it, it wasn't too far. I mean, locally, it wasn't so bad as when you get out, once you start getting closer to Boston, obviously, then the price is... Yeah, well, that's... You can't use that for a comparison. You can't. Like I said, I mean, I got that ad for entry level there. If you looked at entry level, and based on your licenses, it was almost 105000 a year out in Somerville. Mm. Ridiculous. Right. But. So as far as the job descriptions go, I think from what I read through, I went through it quick, because I was like 15 minutes before we get down there, I was waiting on the phone. I was on hold. <laughs> so... Um, which I was glad to see that that he would take it, you know, to handle that. But I'm assuming what he'll probably do is he'll obviously get talk to you, get the get a draft, and then get it get, get it. He'll he'll come up with the template in the format, and then fill in the blanks, and then make sure everything looks legal. And then I'm sure that he'll want you know make sure we're good with it, and everybody's everybody's good with it. But as mm -hmm. far as the consistency of all the town employees that done in a proper fashion. Right. So I just want to list out what positions we're creating right. job descriptions for. for currently, right. So, right. so chief operator, assistant chief operator. We primary. have four that you sent, right? Primary. Uh, five. five. Well. Do you have that paper? Let, that me, just, let me just go through it real quick. Right. I'll tell you what I think. Oh, okay. And then, and then we can decide on if you want to look at whatever's there. Yeah. Um, but a chief operator, assistant chief operator, primary operator, and it's either secondary operator or you just say operator. Mm -hmm. I do need to just skim through the regs just to make sure at this level, because they did come back when they were doing the sanitary survey this time and said, wait a minute, why are you listing that you're a grade one treatment, or grade one distribution when you're classified as a grade two? So technically we're a grade two distribution system. I kind of knew that, but all their paperwork said one, so I went with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, I just, there's, when you hit certain grades, it does change what your requirements are, so I just need to verify that through the regs to make sure we're covered on that basis. Um, so it's either a secondary operator or after you have the primary operator, they could just be operators under that. So it's a matter of whether it's primary, secondary operator, or primary and then you can just go straight to operator. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we had, we had talked about that today, and the only right. I would let him if we could, if it meets the requirements of what what the DEP calls for right. on the positions, the on the on the water side. If yeah, we a chicken scratch right now, I'm yeah. tired. My eyes aren't yeah. working. Um, so primary operator, and, this, and, and this, like I said, so secondary or or an, uh, an assistant or. Yeah. It's either secondary, assistant operator, or just straight straight operator. Because anyone under the primary and secondary would just be listed right. as an operator. And they have in the in the in the descriptions they have a a water sewer operator description. Right. So that would chief operator. So it's just a matter of changing titles and then obviously making sure the 
prescriptions. Those are the, the four primary positions, but then the one that you wanted to hire right away the labor, would be like the labor position. Right, so labor. Which they have a, there's a job description for that, and it's rated in the current. All right. So, and then hopefully the idea of it would be. So, that, so what would that title be? Water sewer? It would just be water sewer labor. Just the general labor to, you know, work within the department. Water, sewer, and labor. Okay. Yeah. Which we can do. They did yes. It's done That's before. Right. That's have they, yeah. have the, they have that there now. In the in the in the uh, descriptions. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea would be to try to get so get the labor position and then get, which would help which would help both out, but pri initially would help everybody out, and then go for the this assistant chief second. operator. And then the laborer may have, if he has the ability to, they'll get his license. Get the water and then get onto this side, get his water license, and then he can still just be, like I said, be a laborer to go back and forth. That would be the, be the, which would be the secondary operator at that point. And if that, if that works out, then if we feel, if we move him up to the, till we get this position established, um, then maybe, and we feel tap with four adequately and not have to worry about hiring additional labor or make the labor part time. If you if you get a labor that moves up to that position to the to the second to the operator water operator and we feel like we're fully staffed, we don't need an additional set of hands, then we're fine, we can leave it at that and then have or if we feel the feel need to just put a uh, part time labor on a casual willy. I think we were pretty. I think we were adequately staffed. We had we had Willie, and it was, that's why he was part time. Well, there was still stuff that we need to start getting done that yeah. really hasn't been worked right. on. Um, I mean, some of the things when we go over the budget, we'll get into some of that. But yeah. um, but as for job positions, and from what I could see, we basically need to do. All the job descriptions. Right. So that's the system manager, mm -hmm. the admin, mm -hmm. and then. They currently have six that the descriptions, which is that. So, so this is seven. Right. So they don't have, they don't have the assistant Either chief operator. Ass right. And that one is required by regulation. Right. So I think they may have that as. Is that for sewer or water? Sewer. sewer. Right. I think they have that as uh, water sewer. Water slash sewer operator, operator in the in the compensation mm -hmm. plan. And that's what it was prior to the new plant being right. built because when you were a grade four plant, the requirements are different than when you triggered right. the grade five plant. Which, when we get into the, with the job descriptions, is what I'd like to do is uh, the ones that I was on the impression on the wastewater side because we had uh, beta. Beta drafted all the job descriptions right. and requirements right, for, right, yeah. for the new treatment plant, and that's what I thought was was put into, into place. But when I when I got the when I got the email with the, with all the descriptions, I said, "That's not the ones that we mm. that we approved and we looked at when we went through it." So I don't know if at the time whatever if it was council that changed wording or whatever it did or the format or template, or they did it at the time. It wasn't the same as uh, but my recommendation was we take what Beta recommended because they're designing it the and then just bring it to today's. Yeah, I just got to check on their. But Matt will, Matt will take care of you. But I get to check on their assistant chief operator position. Yeah. Because I can't remember. I know I had it flagged in that book because back when we had issues with that particular employee, that page got ripped out of all the books. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I did find one yeah. that he wasn't aware of a set of those books that, that existed. So. Yeah. I found that. I don't know if that's the copy that I put in there or if I'm still missing that page because I, I had a yellow flag on it that said missing pages. Yeah. Um, but I know I found it. I don't remember if I put one in that book because I thought I made some copies and I think I might have yeah. put one in that book. But I have some in my folder at home. At, at home and I don't yeah, know so I'll double check on that. I don't know if they're copies or <clears throat> originals out of one of the books so I can look and see which ones, yeah. which ones I have. But I didn't have them all. Right. That's so, really, but I, that I, will I, only I, be the wastewater yeah, side. Right. So I think it had system manager, chief right. operator, and assistant chief operator. Mm -hmm. Right. But it also had the lab tech and you know several others that we don't have. Yeah. So well, I think we kind of consolidated. Also, I was going to say we might want to take the chief and the assistant the, chief and take 
some of those other positions and put those duties in. That's what I, think, I think that's what was done. I mean, I, I've never seen side. that part of it. Yeah. Um, I know I think whenever I started going to the personnel board trying to get it all squared away in it was either the end of 2009 or beginning of 2010, um, I had started doing some of that. So I don't know if those are some of the copies that you had from the stuff that I started doing. No, these were, these were the ones that came out of the book. It was the same format as the one that came out of the book. Okay. Yeah, because I started rewriting them all, but yeah. that was on the computer probably two computers ago, so I know I yeah. lost a lot of stuff when they changed computers on me. But I'll see what I can find. Yeah. And I only <coughs> had, I didn't have the water side, so that's why I'm, I'm Right, so it's only the sewer, so right. the other two positions mm -hmm. have to be done over there right. as well. But I think, the way I understand it, I think Matt was, like I said, you can work with Matt on that. And I was just glad that I was like, oh, this is going to be just the undertaking. That's why I all, recommended it in the format. And I'm like, you know, because we want to be consistent with everybody. And like, everybody That's why I kept saying, you might want to talk to Matt because I know he's very involved in yeah. all of this part. And he's been saying that at the department at meetings that a lot of this is changing and we're yeah. going to do it a, a certain way. Um, yeah. no, I'm good with that. I think it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Yeah, I'm all for that. And all right. Then, uh, so I just think if we can initially try to, we have that November uh, uh, draft that you did, maybe just give that to Matt and then we'll try to get that position filled as soon as possible and then, because everything looks like everything's in line, you know, with the personnel board currently and then. And then if he agrees that those are on file with the personnel board because <laughs> when I went up to him months ago, yeah. it was more he went and he's like, nope, we'll look through them right now. Nope, I don't have one for your position. Nope, I don't have one for this <laughs> position. So I'm like, oh. okay. <laughs> they came from the person. They came from, yeah, from the champ, from the chairwoman. <clears throat> She's the one that emailed them over to me. Yeah. So, whatever they have, but whatever it is, whatever. That's it, whatever. We just need, we just need hands is what we need. So I don't want to be tied up in tied I up agree. bureaucracy. But, so I just want to get, get some people down here and I don't want the employees starting to get too bogged down with the morale gets low and yeah. you know, then they start looking at other, other places and then you turn into you're yeah, always really chasing that. it. You know? and we have good people, so I want to keep yeah. what we have. And what's the story on the we've got an inspection down here? Well, I think about it, I know I should probably bring it up now, but that's all right. It's, on my, email it's on my list of stuff to go through at some point. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, it's, somebody called up asking if they can come do a tour of the treatment plant. So they started off with, you know, EPA subcontracted with us, and we're trying to resolve all these issues with plants that are significantly, significantly in violation all the time. And I'm like, oh, you might have the wrong plant. And he's like, oh, wait a minute, let me, let me, yeah, let me clarify. Now, we want to go out and visit some like yours because you guys are always so well run that. You know, we want to see what you're doing so that we can use that to try to fix the right. systems that they're actually trying to go at. So they, they probably looked at the old system <clears throat> before that, and that was probably <laughs> yeah. numerous violations coming out of that. Yeah, one. that was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went through some of the history on that. Like, yeah. Hey. Um, How old is this plant now? Ten? No, older. It's Fourteen. Fourteen years. Fourteen. Wow. Fifteen. Yeah. Between fourteen and fifteen. I'm not exactly sure what the date of yeah, I can't remember doing it. When I first came on the board, and Ralph was Ralph was here, yeah. and I took a, went down just to get familiarized with everything down here, and I went down and looked, and I said to Ralph, I said, how does this all work, Ralph? He says, oh, it comes in over here, and they had that, what they call it, clarifier? <laughs> I think that's one that they had the arm. Yeah. Oh, you came down before the new before plant? Before the new plant. It was, the new plant was still, it was in construction, but they were working, they were still using yeah, the old still. plant. Working on the old one until the new one went active. So, mm -hmm. And it was it was right up to the top, and it's got that skimmer thing going right, yeah. on. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, well, what happens if you get a lot of rain, you know, a big load coming, you know, if you're already at the top now? He goes, well, he said it cleans itself out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, and I remember thinking, going, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> it cleans itself out right off the river. That's what it was, that's you know. That's flush. Yeah, that's, that's what he called it, the flush. He said, that cleans itself. Let me start over. And I'm like, oh, boy. What am I getting into? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, how Ralph was, he had his, you know. Yeah. That dry. His, his dry, <laughs> that is a guy, you know. Yeah. But. 
I always have a cigar. It wasn't lit. But I always had it in yeah, mouth. always had it in his mouth. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, Rest his soul. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I always do know his keys, too. That's right. <clears throat> but that was funny. You know, I used to laugh, but then he'd come into the office and he'd sit there jingling on the keys until you said, What's up, Ralph? Yeah, I've seen him every time coming in. Just stand there and so shake his keys. One time I'm like, I gotta see. So he oh, came well. in and just sat there and he's jiggling his keys and I never said anything. Yeah. And he turned around and went back out. <laughs> oh, right. But he wouldn't say, hey, you know, yeah. I need to talk to you or whatever. Yeah. And he was a good guy. Yeah. Smart, very smart guy too. Oh, yeah. yeah. When it came to all the... Yeah, he was a... Chemist. I think he had a master's in engineering. Yeah. Yeah, he was very smart. Yeah. Mm. All right, so this probably won't be pretty. <laughs> well, but we can go through and. Oh, we don't need all this. This is what. Well, that's all the backup. That's all existing, but. That tip is going to run out. Are we going to need it or? We have to record all this, do we? If as long as we get the camera, I, mean, okay. I don't think we have enough tape. Let's show what's going on. Um, yeah, just give us. I think just on tonight for the budget. To, I mean, we're early in it, which is good. Um, I think just give us an overview. Of what you're projecting? Um, any any capital improvements that you're thinking of? Well, there's a lot of kind of major things. So, um, I don't have any of the town hall numbers yet. So yeah, well, no, none of that's that. That's all there. fixed stuff. We can't. We yeah. Can't so, see. so the numbers are actually more scary than they look. We just need to. So it's going to be a lot of debate and discussion over what needs to get done. And well, a lot of the stuff we can't. We don't have any say over, anyways. Really. You know, that's. Just well, some of anything it, you know, that has numbers media. over here is what right. we want to look at. The other stuff is we're going to wait for the town to give us mm -hmm. those numbers. <clears throat> Which one do you want to improve? Water or sewer? Uh, sewers here, first. Yeah. Okay. Sewers first. Mm -hmm. Sewers first. That's just how it's listed in the budget. So. Yeah, I think just an overview and then <clears throat> and then also what I would like um, it's nice to have it's nice to have a, a budget overview like that and also supporting revenue budget a revenue sheet so we can see exactly what what our revenue is to support so that's one of the items on this is uh, I talked to Doug today <laughs> yeah to find out if you guys wanted to move forward with a rate study yeah I know Keith well, I think we should Keith had asked about it a few months ago if, well it's been how long In two years. years two Oh, it's only been two? I looked it up. It was only two years. Was it two? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was more than that. Two. Yeah. I think it was two. Well, let's say maybe maybe this might be the third. Be going third, going yeah. into the third year. Um, yeah. I was just going through when I seen Doug came up. And, uh, well, I know that you had something on there on rates, and he thought it was rate, or... I know there was something on one of the agendas that said rates, and you guys thought it was something that came up that Keith brought up or something, but... I asked Lee to add that to the agenda when it was on the agenda because Doug had called that day and I said, hey, can you add this to the agenda so that we can discuss it? So that's why it was actually on the agenda. Um, I forget what you guys said, why it was on there, but it wasn't actually the reason it was on there. It was because Doug, Doug had called earlier that day. Oh, and maybe I said, that's why Keith had asked about the yeah. About the rate total. So, yeah, only reason, reason being because I think we need to, to, to plan properly and get things there's a lot of there's a lot of projects that and upgrades that need to get done and we need to get we need to know the numbers going to a budget season so mm -hmm. if gonna, for instance like replacing a line going up, up uh, existing infrastructure not even counting right. the stuff that needs to get done for for uh, expansion expansion right. on the this industrial is, side this is just, just current just current infrastructure here. right current mm -hmm. infrastructure that we have in place right so there's a lot of those that I'm probably not putting in the budget. There's two of them that I do have in here, mm -hmm. and it's more just buying the materials that I'm budgeting for. I don't have anything in here 
for the labor or if you know if highways even try to do what they did last time in northwest maine to get us to repave the entire full overlay mm -hmm. um, and if we're going to do that i'd rather do it correctly and either wait six months to everything to settle and okay. just see you get that stupid yeah. you know, we put a nice new road in and it got ruined the first six months no it did <clears throat> Extension up north of West Main Street, the whole freaking thing collapsed. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. But I did put in here numbers for just the pipe to finish that because we never finished that. Oh, that loop. Right. So we've, we've got like, I want to say 550 feet or so mm -hmm. to finish that connection to get it looped around. Because right now, if we lose anything on Church Street, that whole end of town is dead. Mm -hmm. You know, because that tank only has one way to go. Mm -hmm. But if you have it looped around, at least that gives you a little bit of backup. Yeah. Um, I think because you know, I mean, you look at you look at the cost of some of these repairs. So, for instance, I think it's been discussed a few times on like how many brakes have been on Route 16. Right, and that's and going up through. That's kind of the one that I moved to be. I mean, other than this Gilboa Street, which has always kind of been a priority just because of the issues with it. Yeah. Um, but that would be my second highest priority is go... The way I would start is going from Franklin Street to the booster station because we have two stubs already set up and it's just connected between the two. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of going from the top of Franklin where they ended the new 16-inch main and they put a 12-inch stub in mm -hmm. to continue we just haven't continued so I would go from that stub to that next one and I do have a bite of pump station yeah booster. right at booster when they did that whole piping set up um, when they I don't know if it was one when they did uh, Glen Street they repiped yeah. all yeah. that right there yeah. and they put a stub to continue with 12 inch going from there to Franklin Street so we need to connect those two. I mean, we've had several breaks on that section mm. down there. And that's your main artery. I mean, yeah. That's all your flow from Glen Street to right. Franklin Street and everything from Franklin up to Church Street. Right. And there's, a, there's a certain point where, like, we're, you're well, spending, yeah. like we're spending two or three you know, breaks, dude. Forty or fifty thousand dollars a year in repair work. Mm -hmm. I mean, the debt, the debt scheduled for. Right. You can just, and now you get all new stuff. And you just. You right. pay the debt schedule and have new stuff versus throwing money at bad pipes. Right. Doing repairs. So I would do, to start off with, go from Franklin to Booster. And then the next stretch would be, I don't know how much you want to break it up, but it would be from Booster all the way up to the Common, basically. Right. Because um, you really need to go from, on, on 16, you need to go from Franklin Street all the way down to basically Camp Meeting. And it's new from camp meeting. From camp meeting forward is, ca is ductile. Yeah. But everything is cast in between there. Yeah. And from Webster Road to camp meeting, we've had two main breaks there since I've been here. Oh, yeah. And they were only 20 feet apart. And yeah, we're circle the hill Just there. as you're going down the hill. Mm. Yeah. So we had two there. There was one in front of Tapley's. There's a couple down. Though. There was one at... Uh, before Tapley's, uh, it's Peterson. Yeah, so yeah. It's one of Peterson's, yeah. one of Tapley's, one of Giu's, um, one before boot, well, on the other side of Booster, two on this side of Booster. So oh, yeah, that's right, too. We had quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. We had yeah. three on that one day, right. three on the same day. Yeah, and you can look at the in expense January. to fix all those. Yeah, yeah they're not cheap. You, know, the end, you can put that money towards the desk schedule. Put a new one. And have all new lines in. I mean, granted, it will cost more, but the, the out-of-pocket expense initially right. for right. And year, the, the yearly out-of-pocket expenses. And the be, vulnerability, the, right. I mean, and it's gonna the, be the ductile's not going to break like the cast does. Right. I mean, that just, it's, yeah, it's, the break it's the hard cast to break right? ductile. Yeah. Those are cast iron. All the breaks things. are the cast iron. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's part of the, the second part of why I wanted to get the budget thing. I was thinking a lot, of, a lot of times we'll get too far into it, and then we don't have time to really. Don't have time to get, I know, and that's, so I'd like to, that's some of my issue here, too, is... I'm guessing at numbers because I don't have proposals. I don't have. Well, we can we can do the what we. I think tonight just get an overview of it. The, the general expenses you're going to know run year to year. They're pretty close. It just be the uh, right. So everything is based off of you know the numbers that we had are basically general operating budget. That's 
you know, we've been fairly consistent for years on those, but there's a lot of projects that have not been getting done because we're just sticking with the general consistent budget. Right. That's what that's where it has to get. Right. Where the rate where the rate study comes in so we know and we need exactly to, what we're right. So I need to put like a five year projection on projects that we need to get done. But there's things like like some of these just came up that there's a uh, vulnerability study that they're requiring you to do. Yeah, I went to that meeting. The no, problem, really? No, not that. Oh, that was different. That's that's MVP, so that's Municipal Vulnerability Program. Pre preparedness, yeah. Preparedness, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, now Mass DEP issued a thing that any water system over 3,300 has to do a water system vulnerability study. So now, beyond what we're doing with the MVP thing, they're requiring us to do specifically for the water system what our vulnerability is, and it's mostly based on that climate change. So it's essentially the same thing, but now they want it detailed, done. So they basically want an engineer to come in and evaluate it mm -hmm. and give a report. So I'm guessing that's going to be around 75000 And they want that by 2021. 2021? <laughs> you really? So that means this budget. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's that. We have to do the collection system evaluation. Yeah. Which I was trying to work on. We just don't have the equipment or the people. Um, you know, I was having Steve do it with me, but he doesn't understand the on the collection system side what the reports entail and what the inspection has to. I mean, he he can run the equipment and get it out there. I'm sure if I gave him two weeks of going through and, and looking at the requirements, but he doesn't have time to do the sewer because he's got more than enough to do on the water. So, I think for budgeting purposes, uh, <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the operational side of the numbers, we should work on those. And then the projects, like you're talking about, those are those are one-time expenses. Exactly. Typically, which that's what retained earnings should be used for. Mm -hmm. So we could, if you have a... Right. You operate on budget... Or system development. On, or system development, so, right. Because so a lot of these are... System development things that I would never mind. I don't mind transferring from retained earnings or system developments to get those projects done. I don't think that should be built into the operational side of the budget. No, right. So that's, that's why. why deal. Right. Right. So that's why I'm going through trying to figure out which way you want to lay these out. And yeah. Whether you put them under capital. Um, well, I think it's just going to be for the wording of how on the on the final budget. So you, we want the expense, the operation of the water sewer department, the, so we get the true cost of what's doing that. And then Just any, the day-to-day -day operations cost this. Right, and then any any capital or uh, any improvements right. that need to be done, or well, the studies that need to get done. Whatever. So i got to break this out a little right. bit, because I, I, I put a lot of stuff in here. Because I think that needs to come out of retained earnings. It's not a reoccurring expense. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think we need to know. We need to separate that in the budget. Yes. Um, uh, there's there's a certain the amount of, like, well. you know, some of these I added in uh, pipe, but that is like a capital. That's not a reoccurring. Mm -hmm. But hydrants, you know, will average three a year or something that we would use. So that would be a mm -hmm. kind of a consistent. Built in, right. In the budget, as opposed to the capital, it is capital, but it's not a. It's a reoccurring. We know exactly. every year we got to every year we got to change from buy a few, right? Yeah. So you can budget for that. Although we do have more than normal to replace right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the as far as the piping and stuff goes, I know it's a capital improvement, I think, but that should that should come out of system development <clears throat> if we're going to be updating lines. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's so, it's looping. It's it is system. We're developing the system. Right. That's what it it is. Right. Um, but it's a matter of, I'm not sure how you want to. I want the, I want the, I want, my opinion, I know what, what you know, generally. Yeah. You want the normal right. operation and then line items of extra stuff that's not reoccurring. That should, right, that should come out of retained earnings and then the regular operating budget. But. So we can see, I want to see. So where it should we, be uh, separate. Well, do you it want it separate want or do you want me to create. Like an extra, like this line here, because this stupid year-to-date expended thing is useless to me. So I just I didn't even include it in here because it's it's useless. I well, we need we're gonna need to see 
you know, what was, like the, well, basically go by historical data on the, on the expenditures on a, on a lot of them. Right. But I think. And what, that's what I initially use, which is why you had, and which is what the FY19 is all based on. That's all historical, pretty much standard numbers. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, but I think that we need to fully understand what the operational side is, is, is actually costing us. Pulling out the, the capital improvements, I think the, the one-time expenses should not be built into the, we should be transferring from retainer and system right. development. You know, so just so we can see where the rates are supporting the operational budget. So I mean, do you follow? I do, I understand mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying. <clears throat> but when I do the budget, if you're doing things as capital, that's gonna go to like capital, right? that's gonna be different than some of this stuff. Because, like, I can't go to capital and say, hey, I need to, you know, do a collection system evaluation and get that to no, try to pass. It's no. going to be something that I need to put into, in. Into the budget. In the budget. I think it's, I'm just looking to, to make sure internally, just internally. Right. That, well, that's what I'm saying is, like, right here, I'm going to have to add X amount of dollars for a one-time project. So do you want me to do, this is our normal, this is what our normal well, operating pull, budget is. I would pull that out. And that would be right. Uh, so I mean, just put a column that this would be the normal, and then have this column over here as one-time expenses, but it's going to go into this line item. Right, and then on, then when we do the wording for the article, that number, all improvements. Right, so we can say all of, this is where we're justifying the the, the pulling from retained earnings, right. and then, them and to operate and maintain. Right. comes in is this fund, and then mm -hmm. transfer from retained earnings. Is and that's another this. question I'm I'm just going to ask well, now since well. we're talking about it is the the system development bucket, retained earning bucket, there's, in DOR's eyes, there's really no system development bucket and retained earning, you know, there's retained earnings, that's it, so, right. if, I'll take it by whatever your opinion is, I really don't care one way or the other, mm -hmm. but, because I can word whatever I need to to justify whatever bucket yeah. we're pulling out of, but, <laughs> I can go and request from Gene that we eliminate system development buckets and it's all retained, retained earnings. earnings. Just so it's, and I'm, I'm on the fence too. I think and for I, the accounting <laughs> purposes, I think Gene probably wants to keep it separate because if you have retained, say if you have an excess in your budget, say at the end of the year we have an excess, right. in our budget, <clears throat> the, the excess goes back into retained earnings. Retained earnings, right. Versus fees that you collect during the, during the, uh, separate. the course of the year for connection fees, uh, uh, goes into the, the system development specifically allocated for. Right. For that, and this other part is strictly for budget, so it's almost like an operational and a improvement. Mm. I think that's why I, that's my I understanding. understand. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. my understanding of. But it's really it's really one bucket. Exactly. But I think for accounting purposes, she probably wants to. You want to make sure. Well, I know what she wants to do. I'm just saying that. Well, I think both. really. I think she's probably right, just for the for accounting, and then for the simply the purpose of making sure that the that the sewer is solvent, the water is solvent. All right. And then you have the, so we're not subsidizing the budget with connection fees. Right, sewer so connection right. fees are paying for all right. our water upgrades. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, I think, what, that's the way I understand. And I, I don't have a problem either way. I just wanted to bring it up because it's come up a few times. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it would be up to you guys if you want to eliminate buckets. <laughs> I, 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 I would look at it that way, though. They, yeah, the state doesn't acknowledge her buckets. They call it, they would be free cash, it would be one number. Right. So They're certifying free, free retained earnings right. as this number. We don't right. care what you're calling it in your buckets. Yeah. But I think it's more of a county. I would leave that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get I leave that to G. I would leave that to her and how. Mm -hmm. We know, just know the money, what we have to work Well, it's just a little bit of a battle sometimes if you're trying to use that money for a project that we're deeming a system improvement and then she's like well that's kind of really just part of your operation or something you know it's just a, a another step of trying to justify why we're claiming to use that money for certain projects mm -hmm. no I mean I agree because and that's years ago when I first started going through all the budget stuff you know I was like well technically the water department should be billing the sewer department for the water they're using down here. So we do use a <laughs> boatload of water down here. But my standpoint on that was you need to see what it costs to run each department. Mm. And if 
for whatever reason, the town said, ah, screw this, we don't want to deal with the water system or we don't want to deal with the wastewater system. You got that. Let's sell it to a private company and they can take it over. You want to know how much it costs to operate that. Mm -hmm. So if, if you sold the water system, they're going to bill you for your water. So yeah. all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute, we didn't consider that. It's going to cost us another $100,000 <laughs> yeah. a year because we use so much water down here. Right. And plus, the, it's going to be accounted for for the unaccounted for. It does, but the accounting part we need to do, but the billing part we can't do. Because <laughs> yeah. I went through the enterprise fund and it says in there that you can't bill yourself. Yeah. So... I was actually just reading that the other day, too. I think it's uh, MGL 53, 53F, I think it was. I was going to say E. 53, 53, no, 53E is the, is the, oh, uh, that's the, that's the reimbursement of the charging funds. Right. But 53F, I think, is what the enterprise fund talks about. Yeah, it says in there that you can't bill yourself. Because yeah. I had already started to try to put that process in place. Yeah. I'm like, ah, crap, we can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Just for accounting purposes, so speak. Right. Make sure it does even credits and it gets wiped out anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. You're just doing it yeah. for accounting purposes. Yeah. It's not like we're right. raising rates on it. Yeah. So that would be my, my take on the, on the overview of the budget. I don't know if you wanna, how much you want to get into... Uh, if you just want to go through and well, I generalize a lot of it, and then we can. I combined a lot of it, so it's can, it's it's not going to be easily separated right now to get it the way you want it. Okay. Um, but there's just kind of key items that jumped up a lot. Um, I can kind of just give you some semi justification on, on where those are coming from. But like you said, now I'm going to have to split them out. So uh, let's see. So the wages just, went up because we're we're up the new employee. Is that what that's in here for? Um, well, some of it is the coal raises. Step in cola. Yeah. And then some of it was position wise. Mm -hmm. um, just talking about the water sewer labor, right. you're talking about a full posi full time position now, and that was always budgeted as a part-time position so that jumped it up okay. quite a bit there and um, some of the overtime was more last year than anticipated so jumping that up. I added a little in that just to kind of cover it because yeah. I think realistically pull it, pull it, pull it. Real, it realistically we're probably not going to get it fully yeah. step we're probably yeah, going to get this probably won't be there right away right this we need this we need right I think those this two will hopefully get, morphs into that, this will, and then right. this gets reevaluated as to what we need. Right. I think at the end of the the goal, I think the goal I'd like to see is making sure we have at least four, two on each side. Yes. On the water side and the sewer side. Mm -hmm. I agree. But for this current budget uh, season, and then work on see just see how that lands us, and then you know you got the usual discretion as whether you think that you need an additional. Uh, yeah, Maybe and I mean, some time. of that's going to come down the road when we start getting into some of these kind of capital things and like the collection system evaluation. Um, you know, some of that might turn into, it might make more sense instead of, you know, it's probably going to be 150000 to do that. And, you know, does it make sense to hire, you know, take this this position that's kind of, a floater position right and add a collection system operator who would take care of the pump stations and the collection system and then this floater guy spends a couple weeks a year working with that person because a lot of that work is two-man job yeah you, you just, just need another set of hands right mm. you can't do it by yourself yeah trust me i tried doing a lot of things by myself and yeah, yeah. some yeah. of it you just can't do so and then but that's a little further down the road i think right. you just we're not going to get. I don't think we're going to get that far. I'll be happy if that's we what I mean. Get we're it. not going to get to that point. Yeah. There's just too much involved training and everything else right. to, Let's to just get us to that point. So, jump this is a good start, and then we right. just need to evaluate and see right. how far we want to get with keeping up with what we should be keeping up with. I agree. <clears throat> so that's where those numbers. Okay. Um, and again, I mean, it's it's budget numbers. I. I didn't really add fluff in there. I just 
tried to picture it as fully staffed, and that's what those numbers come out to. Um, I used the same spreadsheet I created eight or nine years ago, yeah. and I just keep changing numbers in there, and it's all pretty much lined up, and I just plug in what the new rates would be, yeah. change how much anticipated overtime, and then it splits out all the numbers in which departments they go to. So I would go you know, like I said. I would want I would want to have some supporting numbers with this, like as far as what the what the rates generate in revenue. Yes. And then what we had for uh, tie-ins, you know, anything anything that's outside of the normal everyday right. revenue. I'll have that probably by the end of the month. And it's a projection revenue based on right. Historical. So we added this many connections, right. an average of that. Type house is right. X amount of dollars per year. Just so we can see what money we have to work with. So in order to do the budget properly, we need to know what money we have to work with to see where what has to be cut, what's a necessity, what's not. Yeah, revenue should go up quite a bit this year, I would think. And then, yeah. and then also evaluate if the rates need to slightly increase or mm. decrease. Unlikely, but. Say, yeah. There's all the new houses that came yeah. in. That'd be a new one. Mm. Did you guys see on the news this yeah. morning? No. No. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't see that. I forget what town it was. One of, the, one of the towns was on the news. I almost want to say Bill Rica, but um, they were on the news because they inflated bills. Oh, yeah. Like on purpose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, boy. But of course, customers got mad and yeah. went, probably went right to the news stations, but I don't think Bill Rica responded correctly. You know, they said, well, we, we've been trying to change meters and all these customers wouldn't let us change their meters, so. We just jacked their bill up, so it gave oh, them incentive Jesus. to call us. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good. That's, that's not, not a good. That's, that's not, not a good idea. That's not good PR. You got to be a little more politically correct when you when you explain how that happened. Oh boy, it's fine to say yes. We estimated because we don't know what they're using. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, we just jacked it up, so we'll make them call us. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, I saw that on the news this morning. I'm like, oh, making this look bad. Um, so why don't we, if you want so to just, you just go through the sewer. I'll go through the, yep. the, big, the numbers, big numbers that look like they which stand out. Half of that's going to be pulled out. Yep. Um, some of this, like if you go down to the repairs and maintenance, yeah, it was 90000 last year. I put it up to 120. Um, the things in that that are kind of outside the norm, but some of this you got to be cautious on saying it's outside the norm because some of it kind of needs to be put into the norm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the plant's getting older, so the I put three actuators in there because we have, I think, ten. One of them already crapped out. We keep stealing from an empty tank to put them on mm -hmm. to get the parts. Um, but they don't make the parts that we have anymore. For this. Should that go on the capital, though, as far as? That's... No. It's one of those, it, de to, it depends on how you look at yeah, it, because you, 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 you bought it as a capital item yeah. to begin with as yeah. part of the plant, but it's repairs and maintenance. Yeah, repair, it's, it's, these are routine right. things. Operate just because they yeah, cost right. as much as a capital item, I don't know how yeah. you want to justify whether it's... There's a certain cost to do a business and the you know, But I mean, exactly. as far as uh, the, you know, the, putting the, in a budget for, for parts, well, we, we should increase that because the plant's getting older now. Right, but that's that's what I'm saying. That's why it's a little up in the air as to whether or not mm -hmm. you think three actuator setups are outside of a normal operating. We've replaced one. We've got 10 or 11 of them. Another one's going. And, What's you know, the cost of those? About eight or 9000 a piece. Oof. But I had... I finally got us up to par and had spare motors, a spare actuator gearbox, but they crapped out. We used it, and then when I went to get a replacement, they're like, yeah, you can't get those anymore. So we had to have them retrofit, retrofit and come up with a, the new model and get it fit to the parts that we already have. And how many of them do we have? I'd have to double check, but there's six out there. 10 or 11. Oof. And how many have been replaced? One. One. Oh. And I've got parts that I can keep us semi-running semi on the old ones off of 
spares or stuff that I had rebuilt in the past that we have on the shelf. So it'll get us by for a little bit. So what, what's the best minimum practice on that in the, in the industry? Do, you, do, they t do they simply just give them a lifespan to let them when they crap fix them or do they proactively change them? They know that they typically are going to crap gonna, between 20 and 22 years. Nobody's ever going to just change. say, yeah, we'll change these because right. they don't, That's what I'm you're going to wait till it dies. Right. Yeah. But you want to have on the shelf Another one. At least one to get you by. I was going to say, we should have put in the budget for at least one, maybe even. Well, no, I have only one. only had one going for yeah. 14 years. I already planned on getting one after we blew out the last one, because I always have one on the shelf. Yeah. But we used that, and then we had, there was two of them one at once. So we used the one that we had on the shelf, and then we had to order the new setup. So we're right. a little behind the eight ball right now. So that's why there's three, because there's two that I know we need to do. And there's one I need to get back on the shelf. No, so we're gonna need three. So that's three. That's what I have in here. Right. 20, but that's 20, where I came up with the three. One to get back on the shelf. Two I know we need to do, which is it's why I came in at one thirty this morning. Is because one's going. So I had to come in and physically yeah. crank the valve to get it passed. Okay. That's what that is. And then so if we budget for like I said budget for what you think on that three. The three that's this year. Next year I wouldn't say you. Should need three, probably, probably, put in for probably one. definitely at least budget one or two. Yeah, and then um, and if we get if two, happens, worst case scenario, so you know, the beauty of having fall town meeting is right. If you, you run into a or even spring uh, special town meeting, money. yeah. You know. Well, we do the annual with the budget went in the spring. Right, but well, there's annual, right. then there's fall, but at the annual there's also special town meeting. If you need the so I, at the end of the year, right. right. So if I needed something and say, ah, oh, crap, we're going to overspend. Yeah. We got to go to town meeting in the spring and get that money. And that comes out of retained earnings, right? right? I mean, typically you're vulnerable at that point, though, because you it, are. If, if it doesn't, if down, it fails, right. then you're yeah, yeah. screwed for the rest you of the year. You can't plan, right? And that's I don't like right. doing that, which is ideally do it in the annual and then at the at the fall if you need to budget for yeah. additional. Right. Yeah, but at least you can. You have six months to shuck, shuck and drive on a couple of things that didn't, didn't pass. Right. So. What line are you on there? You want another tape? You just gotta let that go. You got a small one. Yeah, because I can read smaller, you guys can't. And I got my <laughs> notes in the side go. <laughs> Smart ass. I used to be able to read real small fine print. <clears throat> yeah. Don't worry, I'm no, getting no, I'm no, getting there with you guys, so I'm gonna end up no. being up that space. We're just getting a lot more paper. No, I need the cheetahs. Um so then I also added some in there was for some of the collection system repairs. I know we have a few things that we need to take care of um, up on North Street. There's, we got to dig up a section of the, the main because one of the laterals coming in is leaking all around it. So we got infiltration coming in there. Uh, that's just stuff that I seen when we were trying to camera some of the stuff, but we, we didn't even get through half of the system. We tried hitting the main arteries and stuff that we could, um, except for Main Street, just because it's too much traffic and we haven't had a shot to go out and try to jet and camera at night yet. <clears throat> um, so anyway, there's some collection system repairs, manholes. Uh, like I said, I know of at least one that we got to dig up to the main to fix on North Street. Uh, so I figured in there's a couple systems in the mains that we got to fix. There's a few uh, manhole. You know, we started kind of getting on a roll here. But, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, then Gilbo pump station. Um, one of the pumps need to get rebuilt now. It is one. That's one of the things that I kind of, it, it's kind of uniform across the whole thing, water and sewer. You know, a lot of stuff we've just been keeping up with what it is, but at some point you really need to re proactively rebuild a pump. Um, like Gilboa Street, right now one of them's the, the, the seal's leaking, so the only way to really fix that is to pull it out. And at that point you got to rebuild it because it's probably going to cost you as much trying to get the pump out of there as it is to have them rebuild it in the first place, so mm -hmm. you're better off just getting it all done at once. So that's plan for now is to pull one of those out now, get it rebuilt, and then once that goes back in the following year, we'll do the other one. 
but same on the water side, so I'm just going to kind of skip yeah. around a little bit, but on the water side, we really got to start considering rehabbing some of the wells. Uh, you know, we kind of did it on a routine, regular basis on the primary side, which is, we'll be doing that this year, is renting the air compressor. Mm -hmm. So that's why the rental number went up a little bit, is we got to rent the air compressor and rehab the tubular well field. Uh, I mean, that pump station, that, that well field's been around since you know, 1909, 1910. I had a discussion with... Main pump. Yeah. I had a discussion with, uh, let me recall his name, uh, he worked at DEP, uh, Joe Cerruti, yeah. for the DEP, and when it was on the oxygen really discussion, because I, I called him up one time for, uh, he was the hydrogeologist. Yeah. We were doing the aquifer study, Oh, so you did it back then you were talking to Yeah. Him? Okay. And I was talking about the well on Glen Street. Cause we talk, I was asking him, is there any way that he thought we could improve? I asked him if we could, if we could improve that well and get it, use a, because uh, uh, that's a, the vacuum well, all the vacuums. Oh, primary. Primary, I'm sorry, yeah. yes. West, primary. West Street. Yeah. And he said that he highly doubted that the DEP would allow never, us to do any. We would never get anything reapproved there. All right. He said, that's because, why you want to maintain that pump still. Oh, yeah, that's, that's why I'm saying every. Two to three years, we're yeah. going to yeah. go through and, and rehab those wells yeah. because you'll never get it approved to replace yeah. that well. Really? And he said it could be, like he said, you've never had an issue. You, you know, it's one of your best, better wells. It is. And <clears throat> he said, given the fact that the landfill, the landfill up, up above, and he said that stuff said, around it, you don't have a clean zone one. Right. But it's very expensive to get the water out of there because you, you're sucking versus pushing. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I said, those are our biggest pumps. Yeah. And they produce the least volume. Right. For the size of the pumps, the yeah. 30 horsepower, where we've got a 20 and two seven and a half. Right. Because I had suggested, mm -hmm. I asked him, you think we could permit that and, and put a put a couple of gravel packs? Yeah. And he said, You'll never uh, get it He through. said, No way. He said, Because you could be that water could be shelved. All the water you're pulling from could be shelved. He said, yep. And and if if, what, if there ever was a contamination of gradient from that old landfill, he said it could very well be going underneath. And there it was. He said, yeah. you, And your water's never had an issue. Right. Could have had an issue with that. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't ever want to try to do anything with that primary right. well field. Just try to maintain it and keep it going mm -hmm. so you don't yeah. have to replace it. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's why that one is always, yeah. we rehab those individual wells yeah. on a routine basis. We haven't done anything with turbine yeah. in, I would guess, 20 years. Yeah, there's another guy, too, that well, I remember talking to him that you know, he wore a cowboy hat. Some of the guy with the cowboy. Bill, Bill Byer, Bill Byer. Oh yeah, Bayer. oh yeah, yeah, Bill yeah. Byer, yeah, yeah, Bill yeah. Byer. He, I think he's done now. Is he retired? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sure he retired by now. He retired when uh, Stantec bought him, I think. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that's in here. To first, I'd rehab turbine. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the process of rehabbing those, but no idea. <clears throat> so basically, they come in and. They make a giant plunger and you pull out the well and they got this thing with all these gaskets that fit inside the tube <clears throat> and they hit it with a like an acid and they, they they do this thing so it plunges and it pushes it out and back mm -hmm. in and they keep going up and down like that to hit it with an acid and that breaks all the crap of free it's about to look at everything flowing again. Yeah, get, yeah. Open up the screens and get everything flowing again. Yeah. And then they turn around and go the other way and they hit it with a caustic. And they do it again. So that way the things that break up with acids will break up and the things that break up with the higher pHs, pH breaks up. And then they sanitize and all that crap. But it's something that you should routinely do on a gravel pack well. So what do they do after they get it done? They, they pump it and pump it and pump it until everything... Yeah, you just, all the, I mean, you, that's, well, when they're doing that, they're pumping as they're doing oh, okay. that. Oh, okay. It sucks all the time. I'll have to find them, but I have videos yeah. of when I did one before, and uh, it was kind of neat watching you, like, oh, all that's coming out of there. Yeah. But that was a really well, good I, I bet you it really substantially good. improves well, efficiency. <clears throat> yeah, it improves your efficiency, improves your yield. Yeah. You know, you can pump more. Yeah. Um, the pump's not working as hard. You're doing a whole well fill, or we doing certain... At primary, yeah, we there's do quite all. a few. We do, yeah, it's 13. You do it all at once. We do all, it all. it's like a two week process to mm -hmm. do all 13. But when we do it, we'll record. Steve's never done one, so you know, it might be Dave knew all the tricks of that well field, so that might be something I might see if Dave wants to come in and you know, we'll pay him for a week or something. But 
mm-hmm. as a subcontractor or whatever. Just you, know, you want to make five hundred bucks come in for the week and walk Steve through this process, just because sure. Dave knows all his little special fittings that he made. <laughs> you know, I know how to do it typically, but you know, Dave came up with his own little things. But you know how anal Dave was with, yeah. with all his stuff. But <laughs> so Dave will, you know, he'll drill it into his head. When you do this and it jams up with a rock, don't ever spin this way. <laughs> Always spin It'll this be way because way. that's, you know, you don't think about it. You just start, you start yeah, spinning yeah. and you forget that you got threaded couplings there and you start spinning the wrong way and you lose <laughs> it. You're, you're, thread, yeah. you're done. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. you might as well shut that well down. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's good to have some like, but, he's got institutional knowledge on all that. Right. And <clears throat> So it's good to, if we, if we, if we well, that's a summertime it. job too. Yeah. yeah definitely. So. Mm-hmm. It might be worth it just to bring Dave in to yeah. walk him through that process because Dave can take the time to sit there all day with him. And, and it's it's those things that you don't think of until you're doing it and you're right. It's like, oh, crap, rock. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Now we're stuck. And, and you don't think of that. So if I put Steve on it and start showing him and it's all right, do this for 45 minutes, I'll be back. And all of a sudden he runs into that. You know. Yeah. I pay Dave to just come in here and sit with him all day and go through the process. Go through it. Yeah. And once Steve does it once, he'll have it down. Yeah. yeah. You know, he'll write up a procedure. You know, mm-hmm. when, when he does it, I'll just tell him, take notes and we'll write a written procedure for it. Right. Paying Dave to come in for a day is a <clears throat> cheap insurance policy. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Versus, like you said, exploring. Versus what that is right. on that. The As you just went through the criticalness of mm-hmm. making sure that pump station or well field gets maintained correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, so give a pump, rebuild, and fence repairs. We've got a lot of them now that, you know, just they're minor things, but they're going to add up to probably a fairly substantial bill. Uh, we had a couple trees come down over a primary during the in-between period of when we knew we needed to get trees down, and we finally got them down. And when they were taking down the trees, they hit the fence in a couple spots. So mm-hmm. there's a few spots at primary we got to fix. There's the hole when it was actually Ralph backed into it at Glen Street and we've got a water repair clamp <laughs> holding the pipe up right now it's been that way for nine years <clears throat> we should probably get that fixed yeah. correctly I don't know if any of you have gone by the uh, the colonial pump station but that fence is kind of falling in it, it's almost like the the concrete the base base is yeah. uprooting <clears throat> so that fence needs to be repaired um, so would you have that in there the 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 in here yeah so repair maintenance it's, what's repair maintenance agree that's we hire it out okay um, the, what's the other one? I hate how these things are working there's another one repairs and maintenance that we do. That's what's going on. So I just got to verify which ones which I actually have. I got it from Gene again today. To, so I think the 524 is outside. Public works. No. <laughs> like I said, I hate the wording on these things. Building and equipment repair that's and maintenance. It. That's us. Yeah. So that's the one that we do. The one up top is the one that's fired up. So that's why that number went up substantially. It's based on the the actuators, some manhole repairs, some cup collection system repairs, the Gilboa pump station, getting one of those pumps rebuilt. Um, but again, we have two pumps at each station. We got to start considering, and that's where <clears throat> you think it's a not a normal budgeted item that's a one-time repair but it's really when you start thinking about it you've got you know two pumps up davis street two pumps at gilboa street two Mm -hmm. pumps at colonial um you know several pumps down here that it probably should get on a rotation where it's every year we do a pump and get it rebuilt and just get it on a rotation so that first of all you don't want to have to rebuild them all at once Mm. Because then it's a huge right. thing, and you're trying to, you know, if you get on a rotation where it's one a year, 
by the time you get back to the first one, it's about due anyway. Yeah, time is total, right? So yeah, you start. That's back where I was kind of getting down with the early exactly with, that. with that. With that other thing. Is it? Is it you know, what's the best way to practice? Right. Them, that's like that. but, this is as long as you have one on the shelf, you wait till it dies. Just wait till it dies. But the other the other thing, you can just rebuild them. These are yeah, you know, a pump. Yeah. If a pump goes down, a lot of times a pump will cause more damage, and then it's a matter of like Gilboa Street. We can't even find the motors for that because it's such an oddball. Um, so I mean, at oh, some one down at the, the yeah, that mm -hmm. kind of but that yeah. at some point it's going to be a matter of all right, we can't get parts for this, and you know this is an old pump station. There's yeah. development considerations going in, so yeah, that's that one of the things that while there's talk of the development, it's yeah you can't add to that pump station. So right, that's going to be upgrade it and I know. <clears throat> yeah, that's going to have to be really upgraded. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, but I mean, we own all that property over there now, so right. we can figure out what the best spot is for it. Yeah. Um, anyway, but yeah, so I think the pumps should be kind of budget one a year to go through and just kind of rebuild it. So we'll have to just break that number <coughs> a little bit on the repairs maintenance just to see what we are with that. And then the next big one would be the professional technical, which was a big jump. By eighty thousand. And that's the collection system. Actually, it should have been more than eighty thousand. It's one hundred and fifty-five thousand. I'm going to professional technical consultant. Why is my number? Oh yeah, you got. So I gave you the first. Uh, that's because of that study we've got to do, right? Yeah. And jumped it up. But what number is yours up to? 105? 105. Yeah, it's 170. Oh. You gave me the one I wanted to, to look at, right? Oh, are you on the water? <laughs> yeah, if we're on the water side, aren't we? No, we're still on sewer. No, still on I thought we'd done that. Sewer, I thought we wrapped no, that up. sewer jumped up even more oh. on the water on that side. Okay. Uh, it jumped up <coughs> 155, right? I thought we had to jumped, jumped up 155, up. yeah. And the 155 is. 5,000 I had in for the rate study, for half the rate study. Yeah. And the 150 was what I'm estimating the collection system. So that's going to be that one time expense. Okay. So both of those are, depending on the rate study, I don't know how you want to, if you factor that once every three years or. <clears throat> I still like the idea of going up 2.5% each year rate studies out 10 years but <laughs> I know Doug, Doug was adamantly against that in the meeting yeah. <clears throat> he was saying we should do a rate study every year but oh, yeah that's well, because he gets paid <laughs> I know. he gets paid for it I know um, and then uh, the head so siding and painting the office he went up a lot on engineering yeah, that's the, An that's architectural. The, Which one? The big jump on the 5304. Yeah, 50,000. What was that for? I didn't put my note on the side of that. Why is that going up that high? Yeah. It's All right, well, just to get an overview. I'm going to have to get back you on that one. I know there was something in there that was... The big ticket items I think I, I, I'd i like to see would be... Would get, like I said, to give us the overview oh, tonight. Then. The 50,000 on the engineering, I was... Um, pretty sure that was thinking as part of uh, vulnerability because I got to double check on that because it's something that was new that came out on the vulnerability. Off of the 2021 budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not positive. That's why I don't have a note next to that because I'm not yeah. positive on that one yet. Okay. I think that may have just been on the water side, but a lot of times they are hitting these. Anything that's uh, climate is both water and sewer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> But for whatever reason, they weren't a water utility, but then that's there. They, they include sewer in there, so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that shouldn't be as much as the water. The water they get a lot more involved on. All right, so keep going. Uh, cellular, I jumped up. Yeah, how come you jumped that so high? Well, there's. Two things involved there. One is the phone line that we have here. 
the 2400 line we had at the other stations. You may have been involved in some of that with the Glen Street when that went in. Which one is that? There's a uh, oh. just under the cellular. Where are we? No more. What the line? Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. We're having yeah. trouble with that receiving. Okay. Well, the problem is, is one of the days I was either at class or dealing with my wife on one of her things. Um, I was out, and the phone lines were staticky. So they called the phone company to come in and fix the problem, and he said, well, one of the things is is that you've got this line going to your water stations. <clears throat> yeah. So he said, I can solve the problem if I just disconnect them. And she said, well, then disconnect them. But the biggest problem is that they sent us out the letters back a few months ago saying that any of your copper telephone lines will no longer be serviced. If you remove them, you can't get them back. But those lines are actually at the stations for personnel safety. They're there individually and you have chemicals there. Mm -hmm. So if there's a problem, they need to be able to call. Um, <clears throat> and secondly, is if this is in a flood zone, if there was a major issue here, mm -hmm. you could move your operations to one of those pump stations and still have communication with all the public mm -hmm. for operations but they got disconnected that day and they were not going to be able to get them back there so for the, for the mail line yeah hmm. they won't. i don't know why i'm not sure what the solution is but i think it's i thought there was a thing that they were required to have service there for 911 like even at your house. Even if you want to, if you want to, even if you want it just for, for uh, if you don't want a Wi-Fi, right? If you want to, if you just want a landline, want a landline just for computers. <coughs> computers. Yeah, I'll have to get for, you. For, I'll have to get you the paperwork there. Hmm. But Lee had it sitting here with the note on it saying, yeah. "You have to look at this stuff because this is all, and it's now." So yeah, that's a, that's. So there's two issues. One I've already started working on a workaround for it is the personnel safety um, so I'm gonna have emergency stop switches I know we have one down here that's mm -hmm. for for personnel if you have an issue you can hit that button and it's gonna be tied into the, the alarm systems that we have to call yeah <clears throat> so I'll do that at the water stations so that yeah we have that down here we do have yeah. one here yeah yeah no, we had to have that thing built for the yes go over here. so it shouldn't take too much to get that tied in at each station. And it's a good practice anyway because we have chemicals and we have chemical tubing. If someone opens a door and something's mm. spraying, okay, you, want something quick. you got something right there at the door, you can hit it, shut everything down, yeah. and call someone so that if you got injured and you can't, you know, so I guess it's kind of a blessing that it happened that this is something we should have put in anyway. Yeah. So I'll move towards that, but then you still have the issue of if somebody needs to make a call. Mm. Um, and there was another issue that came up <clears throat> over a cell phone, something that had happened. Um, but I know at least one employee doesn't want to use his personal cell phone for stuff at all. <clears throat> so it's a matter probably, He's probably got to pay by the minute plan. <laughs> no. No, he doesn't. He has unlimited months one of the reasons he won't but it's there was other issues that we can discuss at, at another oh, time yeah um but reasons that he doesn't want to use his personal phone for work stuff and doesn't want numbers in his phone that are tied to work stuff so <coughs> so if Fair we need to get a hold of him that's and his, I, it's his phone it's so it's his exactly phone. And and we can't, can't force anybody to do that yeah i mean and he he was always under the his side of it was I don't take my pump, my phone out when I go to work he leaves it on his desk and, and it's there and he has it when he leaves here but you know in his mind if, if he's working on something and he breaks it you know we're not going to pay for a new phone for him so he doesn't want to take his personal phone out while he's doing work so that's fine but at some point we need to consider whether or not we get the two people in charge of the department's cell phones or not but some of this is more the other issue with the landline and we've had a lot of issues 
and it's more so since they tied the second line into our phone system. That wasn't originally the intent, but when we took the old police phones and we put that system in here, of course, they never got it working right, so we still don't have voicemail or anything, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was the original intent of getting that system from them was to get voicemail so that if somebody called for Peter, they could leave him a message, yeah. you know, but they never got that operational. And the guy that installed it were like, hey, can you get these? Like, well, this card's no good. You need to get another card. And I'm like, all right, where do I get a card? They're like, well, you can't get them anymore. That's why they upgraded theirs. So maybe yeah. other than it was kind of a waste putting yeah. it in, other than we don't have to walk over there to tell someone they got a call. We can actually intercom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so the second phone line, which is, of course, another one of those lines that they probably won't service anymore, yeah. is our SCADA system to call out when there's emergencies. So Peter now almost every day calls the calls into the line to make sure it's going to work. If he calls in and it goes to the answer machine, then the, the alarm's not calling out. But if he calls in and it goes to the SCADA system, then it's working. So we're having that problem a, a lot lately. Um, and we talk to the SCADA people and they say the best option is to go to a cellular modem. Yeah, so it's not tied into... That. I had brought it up a while back. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that was a while ago, yeah. Yeah, so it's something was it, that was I Wasn't it with the Glen Street one? Was that the one that's having years? No, it's here. Oh, it was here. Yeah. There was something to do with... Oh, the Glen Street, we were having all kinds of yeah, issues with the telemetry. That, right. Oh, that's what that was. That was separate, yeah. 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 We resolved that issue yeah. already. That had something to do with the phone company, though. The that? phone lines, yeah. yeah we couldn't... We, we, we made changes. We had them switch lines. We did all kinds of things. We changed the modems. All that stuff, yeah. it seemed to go away for a little while, and then it started back up again. Yeah. I thought the recommendation of that was to go wireless. Right. So like that. <clears throat> with the auto dialers that we bought, they have that. I, I had already told you a lot of the advantages when the IT guy was here over those ones that we went to. Well, they're auto dialers, which we didn't have at some of the stations, which is legally required. <clears throat> um, when we upgraded and put those in, the steps that they've made in those units, we can control the pump stations with that unit now. Mm -hmm. So we put in a relay that triggers based off of primaries numbers, and when it sees it in their cloud-based system or whatever, we can have it start a relay at, at uh, Glen Street. So well, I, I've always said, and you know how I want that. But if it's required, then do it. Right, and that's why those are done. So yeah. we've met that. We still have two that we need to do yeah. on the wastewater side. but um, Especially when, it, like I said, if it's employee <clears throat> hazards of some sort, right. you, know, you don't want to be dealing with, you got to make sure you stay right up on top of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Today's, so, today's day and age. So some of those are things that we're addressing. I don't know. I didn't read the whole report because we did just get in the report from the DEP inspection. Um, three minor things on there. One was they want us to color code the chemical lines at the water stations so you know which line is the caustic and which one is the, mm -hmm. the uh, bleach. <clears throat> so, well, we operate it, we know which one's which. Mm -hmm. some, they want to make it so if somebody came in that didn't, didn't right. know it. Exactly. Could so, physically look at it and be like, oh. But the problem I have with that is we got lines that are this big. And they said to use the color coding requirements of Chapter 2.12, which tells you bleach or chlorine is yellow, and KOH is yellow with a green stripe. So I didn't get it on that. So when you've got a yellow with a green stripe, and depending on where the green stripe is on the <laughs> position, <laughs> when something's spraying at the you, intent, and the intent is always there, but right. the practicality is it. Right. So unfortunately, we intended to go yellow with Chlorine mm -hmm. and green with yeah, KOH. Right. Which makes sense. But the guideline that they specified said that you had to follow says yellow with a green stripe and yellow. So I'm like, if you've got caustic spraying at you, trust me, you're not able to see good enough to, and see you're not going to go over there and look to see if, where the green line is. Yeah. So you don't know which one. <laughs> Um, Are the controls next for each line, would they be in the same location? So if you're unsure, could you shut both off? Yes, you can shut. 
everything's tied together and the switch that we plan on putting in is going to shut both down. Okay. So you just hit that emergency stop and it'll shut both down, mm -hmm. which is why I want to have them near the door. If you open it and see something spraying, yeah. you hit the button, it shuts everything down, which, and you can go in and see what's going on. And you can evaluate need to. to see exactly. what's what mm -hmm. for identifying purposes. Yeah. Exactly. That's okay. But I don't know, we're still working on it. But yeah. originally, when she had talked to me about it, she wanted it color coded. But then in the report, I did skip through the three things that she wanted required. But um, it said that she wanted them color coded and labeled and arrows for direction of flow. <laughs> so was, there, was there anything in the, in the, in the report that on the, for the budget purposes that we need to address? Uh, I haven't read the whole report. I only went to those three main items and all three of those are minor expenses, okay. color coding, right. labeling, that's, so nothing that's all going to be insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. So there was that, there was she wants us to get, which, debating on arguing a little bit, but they're all minor things. But still, she's pointing, she's telling us to get things fixed that aren't actually legally required to have to begin with. So, because the stuff that we bought exceeds what the requirements are, mm -hmm. but they're not, the number that you're getting here isn't, you know, it's, it's to do with the scaling. We've got to get the scaling clarified and fixed, and one of the scaling problems is, is that most of your 4 to 20 signals on an analog signal comes through as 4 to 20. It's a linear function. Well, we have one flow meter that's a square root function, and it's causing problems with the communication mm -hmm. between the two different systems. <clears throat> so we've been working with the company to try to figure out what we need to do to get this communicating in this language into this program mm -hmm. to make it work right. But she put that in the report that she wants all the pHs and the flows to be accurate as to what's here and what's on our monitoring system. But the monitoring system really just for our knowledge, it's not a requirement and it's not any of the controls that are tied into the interlocks or you know, that's all done with the stuff that's on site. And all those are tied in with alarms that aren't off of the numbers that we're getting on the machine. It's tied in through mm -hmm. kind of a separate, kind of a fail-safe type system as opposed to the analog system. It's a digital system that works completely independent of what we're looking at. But she put it in there that we have to get that addressed. <clears throat> Which, fine, I've been saying I want to fix it anyway, and mm. I already yelled at Wolfler a few times, hey, we got to get the scaling right so this stuff's accurate because I'm tired of knowing that the pump's turning on at 35 feet, but it's showing it's 32 feet and they're not on yet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I want it to be accurate so when we look at it, we know you what we're dealing with. Right. You know, it's is, great. You know, we, we got this advanced technology, but if it's giving us false information, yeah. it's not yeah, really helpful to me. Yeah. Okay. And plus, all that stuff is logged through that system. So you're looking at historical data. You don't want to be thinking that it's one thing mm -hmm. when it was actually something else. So, yeah. But... It's fairly new. We just haven't had time to work the bugs out of it yet. So, <clears throat> but that was the second thing, and the third was she wants me to change how I'm reporting the cross connection stuff, and there's some inaccuracies for the cross connection reporting, which we sub out, so we don't do any of it. <clears throat> um, they want me listed as the program coordinator as opposed to them. So somebody on staff has to be listed as a program coordinator. And some of Kurt's reports came in, and I have to put what he gives me as to what he did for tests. So on it, it says you have seven devices, and you did nine tests, but you didn't have any failures, and you didn't have any retests. So she's like, well, wait a minute. How are you doing nine tests if you didn't have any failures, and you didn't have any retests mm. and you didn't have a new device so why are you doing nine tests when there's only seven devices and he did nine tests one year and ten tests another year and some of that was that they print up all the sheets that we have but you go out to some of them and there's nobody there so or the water's off on a sprinkler system so he writes you know water off but he's got a sheet so he records it mm -hmm. And then when he comes out the second round to do the RPZs, 
he gets his stack of papers and he's like, oh yeah, all right, I got to do this one. So it gets recorded twice as a test because he mm -hmm. considers it a, a test. Even if they have the water off, if he has a sheet and he went there. Mm -hmm. Is Kurt still alive? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Wow. Well, he said he's retiring, I think, this year from uh, Mansfield. Oh, yeah? Because he runs the Mansfield water system. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a long time. He was just in oh, yeah. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. All right, so that's, Jesus, that was a long explanation for a $1,000 item. <laughs> Yeah, but cellular, not cellular. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, that's so yeah. I mean, we, you know we got off topic, but yeah, the, know. it was it for does. the system over here to, to call out with the alarms. And I'm not opposed to. I mean, not the other two guys can weigh in that too, but no. as far as as far as the two top guys having phones, you know, the cheap operator and, yeah. the, and the primary the operator. I mean, it's you got to. I mean, today's have their own personal. I mean, they have the a company, phone, a so work, yeah. a work <clears throat> phone, so a work phone. They can communicate with Bob if need be. I'm not opposed to that. I mean, that's the you know, only thing I was holding off, trying to push forward with that is we're working on. A, we got a radio study committee for the town with the holes. with the police, fire, and the vehicles, and all that other stuff. Yeah, the radios and the vehicles, the you know all that stuff and. One of the proposals was to go to like a Nextel type radio phone. Mm -hmm. So it was a push to talk. And if we were going that route, we may possibly Just end up with three of those. Like I would have one, he would have one, he would have mm -hmm. one in the vehicles, or as mm -hmm. opposed to radios. And then the home base. So if we were here. going, right, and then we'd have a home yeah. base here. <clears throat> so it was three portables. Two vehicle and one home base or something like that. So I didn't want to push forward with getting cellular, buy yeah. new phones yeah. with and plans, and then say, "Yeah, yeah, we're switching to these, so those are no good now." So I was kind of feeling that out first. Mm -hmm. I did put some money in there to kind of cover it yeah. if we did go that route, but I was kind of holding off until I get a yeah. clear answer as what what direction we're going. On. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's that. Uh, all right, so capital was the next big item that jumped up um, on the sewer I put in for half of the portable generator. Um, so the portable is, because we're using it for Gilboa pump station, we'll probably put a connection up at Colonial pump station just in case that one ever crapped out on us. And it's just the plug, like I was talking about, if we, mm -hmm. if we did a primary. I'd, even if we put a generator there, I'd want a plug just as a backup. Yeah. Um, so the portable one because we could use it on both sides I was kind of splitting that expense so you'll see it on both sides which line was that? The, under capital <clears throat> okay. um, and then and under capital I also put in that's one of the things we just got to cash out as two vehicles. So I have two in this currently. One to replace the 350 and then one as the 250 replace. Right? 350. The, the 350 is an 08. The 250 is uh Which one is the service, 11. service body? The 350. That's a service body? Yeah. Okay. I had them backwards. Oh, well, it's funny. The 350 has the 5.7 liter. The 250 has a 6.0. <laughs> Are you putting in for what? A new vehicle? Well, I have two of them in here. Two? Know, it's up. Well, one is to replace an existing, and one is to replace the old existing that we never replaced. The Jeep? <clears throat> well, the Jeep replaced the old one that we never replaced <laughs> the first time. <laughs> well, we, have, we only had two. We had three. Well, we had three. Well, we had, we had three. We never had three. We always had three. Oh, because we, we got we kept the other one on the road. We had, we got we the always, new one. We kept that old Beta. We didn't take that. No, up we had yeah. we had three. We had the Ford, the Chevy, and the Ford. And the Ford crapped out. That's when we bought the F two fifty. And we had the Chevy that Willie used to always use. So those were the three. And then that crapped out. We got the Jeep. 
yeah. to kind of take its place. So there was always three. <clears throat> that Jeep is dead now, huh? You still use that? I saw it. Yeah, no, it's, it's kind of like everything's rotted out underneath it. The the tranny line rotted, so yeah. it's a matter. Of, I'm like, eh, I was gonna go fix it, but I don't have time to go in there. Why don't just make up new lines? Scrap it. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Get to a certain point. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we got we got, we got two and a half old, years out of it, it for nothing. So yeah. we got that from the police chief. Then we gotta find the chief. That was community, uh, development. community development. Yeah, that's why we didn't get the other one that they got rid of. I know, that's that was why I nice said, of that one. He said it was in worse shape, but it wasn't. He probably didn't want to look bad that we were using it for a couple of years. Using it for a few years <laughs> after he said it was not usable. But I'd take a little more chances than he will, I guess. So anyway, some of that capital number there is half of a portable generator and half of a pickup truck. And then on the other side, that was... On the capital on the water side, I'm jumping back and forth again. Yeah. <clears throat> on the capital on that side, it's one and a half trucks. So one to replace the 350, and then half of the other vehicle if that's the way you guys want to go. Is there still a <clears throat> Massachusetts thing that we can buy the vehicles under? The state we buy yeah. Yeah, I, I called MHQ, they still haven't got back to me. I was trying to get estimates so I could have it in here, but <clears throat> they haven't got to get back to me yet. Yeah, they have vehicles we can buy from the state, or the state has a contract with. Yeah, that's yeah, the state business. Yeah. That's, yeah. MHQ only does state business. Okay. That's where vehicles. we have to buy the vehicles from. Well, technically, you don't have to. If you went and got three prices, you could go to Place Motors yeah. and this place and that place. They typically have been the best price. <clears throat> but, yeah. The last, I know the last round we did, it was. They've yeah, been the cheapest. They were the best price. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were Yeah. $12,000 less than yeah. we were going to get mm. in there dealers but <clears throat> but I always had a transmission issue which I think we should go to Chevy's myself I, I agree I asked them for a price on Chevy and Ford just to but I was wondering yeah, a lot of things. people want Chevy's now instead of Ford they're cheaper to, they're cheaper to fix mm. I need a better truck but yeah. some people are partial to Ford you know how that goes you know you have 100 guys that love Ford 100 guys that love Chevy they'll both argue with you you know, blue in the face with them better. I like Chevy now because of the ride. <laughs> yeah. The ride's so much better. I've had both. I like my GMC. Yeah. I've always had good luck with <clears throat> GMC and Chevy. Yeah. GMC, Chevy. I've uh, had Dodge, the Fords, same. and they always had issues. But since we bought that 250, there's always <clears throat> been something with that transmission. I think I've complained about it since day one. Which one? The Chevy? The 250. No, the Two. Ford. They're both Fords. We don't oh, have a Chevy Fords. now. Okay. <clears throat> but the 250, uh, Jared finally got a code on the, the transmission um, showing what it is, but he doesn't get that involved in transmission, so mm -hmm. we went down and talked to Ross Valley. Oh, done in uh, Valley Valley, Transmission. Yeah. Hathaway? Used to be Hathaway. Hathaway, yeah. Hathaway. Used to be Hathaway. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, we went down and talked to him. Prime just had one done. It's only that night. 92,000 miles on it. Yeah, put a place of transmission. Well, ours was it's very from day one when we first got it. It's very common with the Fords, apparently. I wanted to reflash the, the computer, but I didn't want to reflash and then screw up the keys and then you know, get it started. So I said, yeah, let somebody, somebody that does it for a living do it. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, there's looks like there's three, three of the shift solenoids and reprogram the PMC. He says he won't know until he gets into it. <clears throat> um, so I don't know how long it's going to take him, and he said he might have to take it and open it up to get the numbers off the solenoids. Is there a recall on it? To check with Ford? He checked. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. He thought there might be because it's, it's been an issue. Mm. That's what I was thinking of. There's a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's... Um, we're supposed to bring it back. I told him... We brought it down in December, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, see, he said there was some some bulletins out there, but none of them mm -hmm. uh, got it covered. So he's supposed to give me a quote and <clears throat> figure out sometime this month to bring it in. But hopefully that'll fix it. Like I said, since we bought that truck, it's, it's 
always been a shifting issue with that truck. The 250? Yeah. yeah. So on the 350, how many, how many miles are on that? Uh, I'm not positive off the top of my head. I'd say we're probably getting close to 100,000, though. Is it? Tell us your runs, too. But it's got... And then a million the, idle hours. No, it was yeah, crazy. So. Yeah. yeah, I know. And then, uh, <coughs> there's a fiberglass body on that, right? The fiberglass bed, yeah. But so, they but the carried the salt, in, salt in it, so the whole, yeah. whole bed's rotten out of the back yeah. of that. And then once it gets under that, it gets mm -hmm. into the Everything frame, else under everything that. Everything yeah. yeah, so. And that was an 08? Yes. This was an 08? 08. That was an 08, and the 250 is an 11. Is it twelve years old already? Wow. Yeah. We want to change them every three years. I want to change them somebody, almost every no, year. Somebody on the finance committee. Or, oh no! Somebody at the town meeting asked us why we're not leasing them. And I'm like, well, the uh, purpose of leasing is to get the tax benefit, and right. you yeah. don't get a tax benefit. Yeah, we don't get tax benefit for that. <clears throat> Better off to buy them. Well, I, so, said, I said I said we should replace them every year. No, somebody wanted to replace them every. Make sure we. Alternate every three years we yeah. get a new vehicle. I forgot who it was. You gotta realize you're dealing with a few tight conservatives down here. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> so you, you know it wasn't Jerry. <laughs> Jerry was asking why you're replacing it. I got five hundred thousand miles right, on yeah. my car. I want to see your maintenance records. Yeah. I know. yeah. yeah. Jerry, the same a couple of guys with the tightest back on a tree around here. Yeah. <laughs> Within reason. Yeah. I, I looked afraid, at it. I'm not afraid to spend it, just not waste it. That's all. Yeah. You know? If it wasn't such a pain in the ass, I looked at it saying. So we're going to replace that? Well, I think I would recommend replacing the 08. Yeah. Replace the 08. Right. Keep the 11, but we need a, a third vehicle. Which one we have? That's a up in the with? air as to what the we're looking at. The 08's uh, have the transmission? No, that's the 11. Oh, that's the 11. But that'll fit, that's only got 43,000 yeah. miles on it. That one's still in good shape. It's in good shape. There's nothing wrong with that truck. It's just the transmission. transmission is, like I said, that's been since day one, though. So that's not a matter of the age of the vehicle. That was from right. day one. That thing never shifted right. <clears throat> they fixed that. That truck should be fine for a while. Um, so are they going to make, not the, it's the same topic, but I'm not going to talk too much, but on the, on the 350, are they, gonna, do they, are they following the same guidelines that the state's requiring on the, on the one tons, about having DOT numbers and all that stuff? You go to break. Uh, that depends on what that depends on what one ton you get because it's the one tons over 10,000 some of the one tons come through at 9,999 yeah and if you're that one you don't it's not requiring the DOT, the DOT. if you're over the 10,000 it triggers the DOT stuff yeah. I know because I went through that with my personal stuff I got I got I got out of it this year on my truck because I did, yeah, it, did three it before quarter. no I got one ton oh here's the one yeah 3,500 and they I got all the information on it, so I went to the insurance company and they said, let's see, we might be able to, a, if it's done before December 16th, I think, there was a date, you, would, you didn't have to do it, but next year you're going to have to do it. So mm -hmm. if it was done before then, you were good for the year, but next year you're going to get the DOT numbers. Yeah, the DOT well, numbers on the side of the truck, yeah. you're going to have the fire extinguisher, the first yeah. aid oh. kit, the traffic cone, the yeah. signals, the flares, whatever, all that crap. Yeah, so, yeah, so that was another I'm, question is I don't know if we want to go... To a 250. I yeah, that's what I said. I'd what do we need on. a 350 for? I think at the time it was cheaper or the same money. I, yeah, I think that's what Yeah. Well, that's okay. what happened when I bought the 250 because yeah. originally we were going to buy a half ton two wheel drive. Yeah. But it was cheaper for the 250 four wheel drive. Right. So said, well, yeah, yeah, okay, that. that's right. Yeah, I think it was something to do with but that. But I, I don't see why we need to go in a bigger than a 250. Well, that truck hauls a lot of weight. Does it? We have that thing loaded with. Uh, um, so yeah, I don't know as to DOT wise. Yeah, I think we should replace it with a three quarter ton. I mean, if there's anything substantial we needed a one ton job, we'd up with the dump with the one of the right. smaller three fifties that he has up there. Yeah, with something that oh. quite a difference in price too, isn't it? Between a two fifty and a three fifty. Sometimes it depends. Yeah, it depends on what they're selling the most of. Because it might be cheaper now because with all yeah. those requirements, they may say, "Ah, oh, nobody's gonna want them." We got so a boat so of these that we got to get rid of. Yeah, they may just want. <laughs> Yeah. But I, he's supposed to call me back. I left him a message saying I need prices for half ton and one or three quarter ton and one ton pickup truck utility bed. So I went both ways. I said Ford, Chevy. Yeah. You know, give me prices on both. Um, but well, 
once he once I talk to him. But yeah. so and I will say I'm about to use an example. Mm -hmm. And and I, the guy had a legitimate complaint. He said, you know, he said I was looking. He says, you know, you uh, you guys tell us to the customer up on on uh, Baton Road. He said, uh, no depot. He said, you guys promote conservation. You tell us to promote conservation. He said, but yet I see you guys driving a <laughs> F-350. At the time, there was two people in it, reading the meter. Yeah. How efficient is that? <laughs> and I, 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 I couldn't argue with him. He's right. right you you know? can't argue with him. Yeah. He's right. Well, so. <laughs> that's my second question is, you know, all right, we replaced that truck, but for the third vehicle, what route do you want to go for that? Whether it be a car, a small pickup, a SUV. Yeah, I have to explore that a little bit, I think. I think the last time we had talked about it was getting a... Like an S10 or something. something like the small, Ranger. They don't make the Ranger anymore. Yeah, they, they do. do. But they, they started making it again? Yeah, they started big, making a Ranger again. Big money, though. I was going to say, yeah, they cost more. Uh, I did a, yeah, somebody said that. That's very true. I, see, I looked at it. It was 43000 Wow. And it was loaded up, obviously, but... Well, I, I, I can like get Keith mad again. Do we need it to carry Let's get the Tesla truck. We need, it to, <coughs> well, we need it to pick up supplies. We need a pickup truck more than a... a well, we still have two other ones. Yeah, and, the and Jeep, that's the like thing. The Jeep work could have something more of a... Something more economical, uh, economical and serves a purpose. So, a, a, like a cheap car? It doesn't, it doesn't really need to be... What do we need? What do we use it for? Either. Like Basically running around, I think, just reading media. Just yeah, around, you know, reading around readers, the town hall. Town hall to trainings or going to the lab or, you know. Yeah, I was going to say going to the lab and stuff like that. So we, yeah. we can actually get away with a vehicle, a car. But yeah, I mean, it, it yeah. doesn't matter to me. We just need something else to get to things. I'd like to have something that we can stick, like a... Now, a state thing, do they have cars there, too? They must have, yeah. huh? Yeah, they don't have anything you need to get. We don't have to go to electric, do we? No. no. The green. Yeah, I'm putting in for the Tesla pickup when that comes out. Yeah, I'm getting Tesla. We, yeah. we need the we need the the tri motor. Yeah, we're just, with the auto drive. Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's three thousand less than the Chevy that I looked at up at. Uh, what's the one in Menden that? Imperial. Yeah. yeah, I stopped and looked at that red and black. You seen that two tone? I didn't know the Rocky one. Ridge oh, yeah, edition yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah I stopped and looked at that. that. Seventy. It was seventy nine nine ninety nine. So eighty thousand dollars. A pickup truck. <clears throat> and the highest end Tesla was seventy six, six or seventy six nine. So it's three thousand dollars cheaper for the Tesla, highest model zero to sixty in two point nine seconds. And it has. You don't need a generator. It has a onboard inverter type thing yeah. mm -hmm. I think they said you can basically run your house on it so then we wouldn't need the little Honda generator <laughs> <coughs> built in air well, compressor the you can get the built in you, can get, you can get the inverters built right into the box yeah, yeah. I would do that now they have my actually I gave one away I got one from one of the guys that worked at Comcast oh yeah, yeah they were scrapping it and took it out and gave it to me I made a little homemade job thing that I used for battery power oh yeah charge batteries and then, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. All right. So you're putting it for this. two vehicles this year. But like I said, that that still needs a little more yeah. conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll separate all this out and go over it in more detail. Yeah, plus Keith will be here as well. All right. Um, I think that was it for the major stuff on the sewer side. Yeah. So on the water side, we covered some of the big... Some of the big items, the wall rehab. Um, I also put in here that we should probably rebuild one of the pumps at primary, because those haven't been done in ages. The pump itself, we have two split case pumps over there. Um, those are good pumps, so I would say we should probably try to, you know, keep up on the maintenance on those. And if we have them rebuilt. Uh, that's one of the things I'll look into. Sometimes I can get grant money if we rebuild it and have the uh, balloon and the impeller coated with a, it's like a ceramic type coating they put on them and it increases the efficiency. So you can try to claim energy efficiency and get some of that cost covered. Uh, so then the, so that's the rehabs. 
on the pumps. A well rehab, rebuild one of the primary pumps, the pointing and repairs and stuff at primary, on the primary building, and fence repairs everywhere is what equates to that. The 55? Yeah, that increase. Then the next one down, the professional and technical, which is what you were asking, that was the vulnerability study and the other half of the rate study. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm only guessing. So the vulnerability I'm going to guess is going to be around seventy-five thousand. The rate study is going to be. I budgeted ten. I think it was actually like eight something, eighty-five hundred. Last time we did it. Yeah. Eighty-five or eighty-nine hundred, and he's like, "Well, I think whatever I charged you last time should be okay, unless I gave you a ridiculously low number. I might have to go up a little bit." And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't think your number was ridiculously low, so." We'll stick with the whatever you charged us last time, but anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then if you go down to the capital, I added money in there for the pipe for Cemetery Street and for Northwest Main. But that's no nothing put in there for labor, material, excavating, any of that stuff. It was just the pipe itself. <clears throat> Um, so the pipe for those two projects, because John wants to repave Cemetery, mm -hmm. and that valve doesn't work on Cemetery Street and hasn't worked since I've been here. Um, so we at least need to fix that, but if he's going to repave that road, I'd rather get at least that section that mm -hmm. is in there to replace that pipe. Because mm -hmm. you know Cemetery Ave is not going to get repaved for... Yeah, another hundred years. God knows how long, so I don't want to have to go. do a whole cemetery? I don't actually know what we have for pipe in cemetery. The way everything shows, it goes down cemetery and then down A, it doesn't go all the way down. But when we replace the service line on the guy down at the bottom of cemetery near B, his line came in from cemetery side, so I don't know if they ran it up from B and then came in the side of his house like that. Kind of like they did over on Northwest mm, Main, where they ran, ran a service line all the way down the side of the road. <clears throat> I'm guessing there's probably nothing that goes through there. I don't think so either, because I got no valves down the bottom. Yeah, I can't find anything. Yeah, you what do you want to change that whole line? <clears throat> just the stuff in in cemetery over to to oh, A Street. A Street. So just that section. I want to say it's like 400 feet um, ballpark. So they're gonna pave that. So but I want to replace that, that line before, time, before they good. pave it and compact it. That bitch does nothing for us to cemetery. That's what I think. And, and that one, that's why I don't mind doing that one ourselves. If it's just down that strip, there's no connections on cemetery. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it is kind of a, just with the issues we have with flow in that end of town, you know, you don't want to lose that. You're going to increase the size of it Yeah. at the same time? Yeah, it would definitely go at least 8 inch. It's what's on, what's on, what's on uh, A Street? No. B Street, B Street, that's six inch cast. Ideally, it would be nice to run all the way down. Say, it be, to be. I'd better to run it all the way down <clears throat> and tie it in there. So it would be, but now yeah, you're getting now you're, you're getting right into that. We got a good twelve hundred feet. Right. We don't know what's in the road. You know, it hasn't been excavated for that. Um, I mean, if we go down there and we get to A Street and it keeps going then yeah, I would say we should probably continue going. But like you said, I don't I don't yeah. think that it's I don't think there's main down there. I think it just comes down and goes down A Street. Because there's nothing there was never anything up there. <laughs> right. There's, there's only one house there. Well, this I mean, there's one on the corner. Wolfen's house was tied was tied in on on the Gilbo. Yes. And when you come down the cemetery there was nothing there used to be an old camper that somebody lived in. There is one meter box so there's a service connection with a a meter pit on cemetery not that first house that sits back but there's the wooded area mm -hmm. it's all still wooded mm -hmm. that has a meter oh okay yeah, it has a meter pit in there with a service maybe there is a line that used to be no there is a line coming down but that's a top half top half right it's not down the further end because it was there was a there was a structure there, and then actually, uh, Wait, is that on the corner lot? No, it's right behind Orphans. Yeah, <clears throat> it's right behind Orphans. 
between Nelsons and Orphans right there. It was undersized lot, 5,000, 5, 5 7,000. Yeah, wasn't there a trailer there or something? It was. And there, actually, I was on the UBI. I remember the little history of that. And they, and they went to court because they wouldn't get, couldn't get a building permit. And they appealed. To, and we ruled that it was, well, we made the, the pre determination that it didn't meet the, no. the, the pre existing. So there was a water line that runs so in there then? There is a line. There is a connection there. I don't they know do want to eliminate that. I don't know if you want to keep it or eliminate it. I mean, if it's it's been there as long as I've been there and it's never been used, I'd eliminate it if it was me. You, well, it's not a buildable lot, so if, it's, I mean, yeah, somebody, it's, if somebody bought it and put a garage or something, they want to want it. I think it's a... Yeah, it's not <laughs> buildable. It's 5,000 square feet. Yeah, it's not. But still, Is I don't it a think, separate lot by itself? I don't think we it have was. sewer going have, down there, yeah. so... No sewer down there. What are they going to do with water if they don't have sewer and you know it's too small to put a septic in? Yeah. So I'd eliminate it if we're going to go down there and just make it that much easier. It yeah. be just a straight shot mm -hmm. down, right. no connections. Yeah. You know, if they need water in the future, we dig it back up. It's on that side of the road anyway, so yeah. we'll keep it on that edge of the you road. You run it off of down the street yeah. a little bit. Just to get us off of. Yeah, get it off the road, yeah. 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 Put a new valve. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we put a put a T in with a three way valve right there. So if we did decide we needed to go down, probably not a bad idea. Right, just to have a T there, and we'll yeah. stub and plug it. <clears throat> so anyway, so I did put in there for the material for our cemetery and Northwest Main to finish that loop. Mm -hmm. uh, plus one and a half for the truck, plus the primary generator and half the portable generator. That was under uh, petition law. Oh, I must have had that in there. So I don't have enough money in there for all three of those. Yeah, additional equipment. Yeah, that's where I jumped up. So the additional equipment was, uh, I think, the vehicles. Yep. The vehicles and. So some of it's under capital, some of it's under additional equipment, and some of it's under replacement equipment. So the replacement equipment is the generator and then half of the portable generator. So that number will come off if I get it done this budget. <clears throat> because one of those, the portable generator or the replacement generator should be done under the current budget. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go, go like through this and get this. Uh, and that's, a, that's a huge increase from the law. <clears throat> So, but like I said, you got to pull out the capital improvements up. Yeah, so, uh, so but that's what I mean. It's this is trying to pull all this out right now, and my yeah. head is going to be a little difficult. But. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, and a lot of these are guesstimates on the numbers because they didn't get back to me on what the vehicles are going to cost. So I ballparked around thirty-five. <clears throat> uh, same with the generators. I think I used the same for that. Thirty. I'm, I'm the second beetle. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, given the fact that there's so many other items in the budget that have driven, you know, are going to be driving the, the cost up, I would prefer, I mean, if, if we can sort of discuss it for waiting until another year to do another vehicle, so we're not doing two vehicles in one year. For, for just for planning purposes, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, for planning, I guess we can look at it as we replace the 350 with a new vehicle and we use the 350 as the backup third vehicle until we get to the point that we can get it. Yeah, taken. that's what we do. That's I don't, how, I don't want to make it look like we're replacing a replacement vehicle, but no. it's just going <coughs> to carry us through right. to get us until, like you said, I don't, no, and I don't really want to buy two new vehicles in the same year. Yeah. I would rather spread it out. <coughs> that's what we did. That's how we ended up. But with, the, that's how we ended up with the, the other vehicles because we did that and then Kept one of the old ones mm -hmm. and just used that. So we use the 350 for a backup? We'll use the 350 as the third vehicle until we get around to yeah. getting a little clearer and not so many major projects going all, on, all at the same time. <clears throat> um, but the 350, my concern isn't that it's not okay for the day to, you know, just activities like going to town hall or whatever. But it's our primary vehicle for all of the water. Repairs, emergencies. Right. You need a reliable vehicle. 
you need something that you can trust, mm -hmm. and, and that one's getting sketchy. So, <clears throat> but it's still it's usable for around here. It's eleven, twelve years old. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that truck, you know, it, it doesn't owe us anything. It's, no, not in way. I was. I mean, Dave, Dave used it to haul the hydrants and everything around with the freaking plow. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years is good. It's a good, good number for. Yeah. Change would be, but, but that one with a plow, yeah, well, down here. yeah, it has a plow on it, right? It does, yeah. So, we'll get a new one with a plow, yeah. I would go with the V plow because what a difference, yeah. night and day. I like the V plow between people, that and the some people don't like them. The only thing I don't like about it is like it digs. Oh, yeah, like I went up to do the turnaround at Glen and it was like, I'm like, whoa, all right, yeah. never mind, yeah, I come up with the other truck and do the, do the turnaround yeah. until you get. The feel of it. Yeah, until you get the feel of it and you can all right, just you know to lift up just a little bit to to yeah. go in there. It's hard to it's You can't put it on float when you go on off off pavement. No. No. Usually I just stop <clears throat> when you get to that I just drop it down the pavement and then then stop yeah. it because it'll it won't go in the float. Right. Just and then just back it up back, yeah. And you won't kind of you play it by the end. Yeah, I found out the hard way that it, it did. <coughs> yeah, it does. I dig it <clears throat> real good. Um all right, so that's all the budget stuff, but then I had a bazillion other things that all need to be considered and determine whether we want to still try to hold off or put them in and move forward. Um, well, the sand trap at primary, if you ever go over there, we can show you. It's about as scary as you're going to look at. Sand trap. So the primary well field has all your 13 wells comes into a common header pipe. Mm -hmm. They come into the building, well it goes through a sand trap so that any sand and stuff that you're sucking through the screens in those individual wells gets caught in a sand trap. And then it goes into the pump. And then it goes out to the distribution system. So there's a sand trap that's built into the floor. Mm -hmm. So all you see is a ring that you can get to the top. Well. None of us are gutsy enough to try to take that cover off because if you break that seal and then you can't get it back together and seal it up right. And if you, so there's a little vault. I don't know if you've been over there and you see under this, under the platform, yeah. there's a little square oh, yeah. vault yeah. area. Yeah. Well, we've made an aluminum cover for that, so that's covered now. But you take that off. If you go down in there and underneath, there's a void underneath the floor. And it looks like somebody went in there with a sledgehammer and a cut saw or something to make the void. So, <clears throat> so the only way you're getting that tank out is to cut the whole floor up. Disconnect all the piping, which is 100-year-old piping mm -hmm. and probably a 100-year-old tank. If you look at it, it looks like something out of the Titanic. It's all just bubbled and... So at some point, something's going to let go with that, and it's going to take down the primary well field. So I'm guessing you're talking probably at least a hundred grand to replace that tank, because you got to cut the. I would probably say it's going to be more than that, but you got to cut that floor up, take that out, repipe it all, put it back in, mm -hmm. and repour the floor. So it's something that. None of us are even willing to touch because it's one of those that yeah. you, I mean, that's, I think you put your finger in the dam and you're kind of stuck. <laughs> I mean, I think what you need to do is prioritize oh, which yeah. ones you think. But that's not a lot of the stuff that we there you can say, okay, then, then we can, like I said, put it out. Okay, say, can you get away with it this year? Okay, can you put it out the next year and just try to <clears> prioritize <throat> that out? Because like, with the look at these numbers, I agree, but again, this is. Hmm. The primary well field, you know you're not getting a replacement well in there. Oh no, it's a high priority. So this is a, I, mean, I don't know how high priority, I know it needs to be done at some point. It's a matter of... And can, and can we get that through capital? You know, can you put that on a capital list? I can put I it on think. capital, but they're going to ask where the funding and they're going to... Oh. <clears throat> so capital is still, if it's funded by us, it's still... I know, that, but you like, know what I mean? Like, remember how we did the... Pump station, they, they paid half, we paid half. Yeah, but I gotta have a reason to justify why that's why 
it's not just the ratepayers covering that. Yeah. You know, it's an existing pump station to provide the water that you use mm -hmm. yeah. every day. Yeah. So. Yeah. so I would have a hard time coming up with a justification, a sale on why they, they need to kick in on that. <clears throat> Both PRVs, I would say, need to be replaced. Nothing's been done to them, and I probably can't even guess how many. Yeah cycles back because when I started here I asked Dave about them and he's like I don't know those, I don't even know what they are <clears throat> so we opened them I'm like well those those are PR I asked him you know you got you got two different pressure zones because there's no way these two yeah, tanks right, are working yeah. there, there has to be a separation right. so we found he's like yeah well there's something on West Street and there's something on uh, right across from Brewster right across from Brewster. so I went and looked at him I'm like well do you ever service them he's like we don't do anything with this. that's the one that's under the ground yeah, yeah, so the I, road, right? so, I mean, yeah, booster it's across yeah. the road at West Street, it's in front of the cemetery, right? Yeah. Right in between the two hydrants. Yeah. <clears throat> so I said, Well, Dave, those don't work underwater, they're underwater, they have to be vented to the atmosphere <laughs> in order for them to work because how it equalizes the pressure right. and, and reduces. I said, They don't want to work if they're not vented. So I said, You got to pump those out. So we pumped them all out. And like, I'd be surprised if those things work at all if they'd been underwater this whole time because they never pumped them out as long as Dave was here. So that was 13 years. I don't know how many years before I was here. but mm. <clears throat> And if he didn't know about it, I'm sure whoever was before him wasn't doing anything with him either. So anyway, he pumped them out, and then the next time he went to do his flow test, he called me up in a panic saying, Oh, something's screwed up, something's broke. The water's not shutting off. It's still flowing like crazy. I'm like, your PRV is actually working, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what's supposed to happen. Here. Right. If when you did it before, you didn't close a valve over there, that means your PRV didn't work if you had no flow coming out the other. Mm -hmm. the other floor. Yeah. So he's like, oh. So he we went and shut that valve. He's like, oh, yeah, that was it. So we shut the valve on this side. So it worked. Mm -hmm. But I think that may be what caused our break on Main Street. When we were over pressurized? It wasn't that we over. Pressurized, but we went and looked at our chart recorders and stuff on the uh, the booster station monitoring stuff. And when we were flushing that pipe under the river, <clears throat> well, what happens is we shut off the Franklin Street side and we were pulling down from the Church Street side. So that PRV valve had opened up to supply the va the water, but it must it the way those work is it takes a little bit of water from your high pressure side. And it sends it through some some small orifice yeah, it goes up in the tubing over into a diaphragm to push down, mm -hmm. and you set your spring pressure as to how much differential you want. Well, that the water's supposed to push down from the, the high side and push down on that valve to close it, so that it doesn't send as much pressure down below. <clears throat> so obviously, that the way it works with the small tubing is it's supposed to slowly move that valve. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at, I think we actually broke part of the gauge, so that gauge must have just went on the wall. And we turned that valve slowly, but it must have just, in the valve, must have just quickly shut and fluctuated and caused the water hammer. I mean, isn't it a diaphragm that it's pushing down on? Or? Yeah, it's a diaphragm. Yeah. That's why it's supposed to go slow, but Right. Either the spring or the well, orifice or something wasn't working correctly, and it just closed oh, shut. Oh, wouldn't have been the diaphragm that ruptured or anything. It wouldn't be a rupture. It would be that it, it closed fast, Too where fast. Oh, okay. that pressure is supposed to slowly right. <clears throat> operate that valve, and it didn't go slowly. It just went wham all at once. So you get that banging back pressure. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing happened. <clears throat> so... I'm going to recommend that we place at least that PRV this year and probably the other one next year. You know, we'll do one than the other. I already asked Brad to get me quotes and I haven't got those back yet either. But I've been asking him that for a year or so. <clears throat> so I think he's a little scared. Because <laughs> he looked at him, he's like, oh my God, nobody's, no, nobody's ever done anything with those. I'm like, yeah, I'm aware. But the one at the one over across from Booster, obviously, I think something's not functioning correctly there. But that one, we have already put a drain 
a gravity drain off the bottom of that vault because it goes down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a cliff off the side there. So we drilled a hole and we're in a trench down and we got it going off. So it just gravity drains. West Street's a little more difficult. I don't mm -hmm. have anything. I don't have electricity. And it's kind of flat there. It's a slight downgrade, but it's quite a distance to get to the next catch basin. And I don't know if the, the height differentials there. I don't want to go with gravity drain. drain at all, yeah. And it's going to be expensive to trench all the way down mm -hmm. to get that water to gravity drain out of there. Otherwise, we're looking at some type of solar setup with a solar pump, a sump pump, to keep it from filling up because you don't want to go put a new PRV in and let it flood every mm -hmm. six weeks. So I got to come up with something to get the water out of there, whether it be a gravity drain or some type of sump pump that's off of solar. I just get nervous about putting some mm -hmm. type of solar thing because kids go down there and mess with it or whatever. There's just a lot of yeah. things that can go wrong. If you can get gravity, that's the way to go. But <clears throat> so that's why I'm recommending we'll do one this year. We'll do the one across from Booster, and then we got to come up with something to fix the drainage issue for the other. For the other. For the What's the cost of those things? To do, it's probably going to be ten grand a piece. Okay, that's not too bad. No. But still, I don't want to. Yeah. Well, I want to try 10, to do 10, 10, 10, 10 yeah, yeah, 10, <laughs> you're 20, 100, yeah, 20 or 30. Then, yeah. let's, let's, it's been, I don't know how many years since either of them have been, had anything done with them, so let's yeah. get one done and then we'll look at the other one next year. Plus, we do one that'll give us an idea of how it's going to go and mm -hmm. give us a firm number for the next one. Uh, Gilboa hatch, we got to get that repaired. Hatch is rotten out, and it's actually part of the structure. It's part of your ladder when you open it up mm -hmm. to go down in there, mm -hmm. and it's starting to rot through. So, for one, water can get in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good to be. So, we got to get that fixed. No idea on the price on that. We've tried getting the quotes from a couple people, and some people won't touch it. I think he found somebody that's willing to at least take a crack at it. It won't be pretty with a dome, it might just be a flat, no works. flat top, something that's going to. Be effective, but in. not exactly. Yeah. It's gonna work and ain't gonna look like it's supposed to be there, but it will serve its purpose. Uh, Gilboa, so Gilboa transfer switch and generator plug. We gotta get that done. The one over there, I think Steve put a four foot pipe wrench and can't get the flapper to open. So, what is it? The yes, it's got a generator plug, okay. but you, you can't get it open. Oh, okay. They had two of them over there with pipe branches and couldn't get it to mm. to open. Hmm. It's supposed to just be open with hand and stick the plug in. Well, it's sealed up there and you can't get it to open. It's going to take torches and everything else, and at that time you got to wreck the plug. So, mm -hmm. um, no safety belt on something that you're not. Yeah, no. Some kind of a safety thing. No, we had the floor over there, too. Oh. They, <laughs> they looked at it, too. Prying and prying to <coughs> slide something over. Yeah. Hey, you forgot the pin. <laughs> <coughs> that, <coughs> and on top of that, the transfer switch, they can't get open either. Yeah. So all that's been there since it, been, since it was put in and has never been used. So we got to replace that so that it will work with whatever portable generator we get. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's not, um, that doesn't seem like a big ticket item, right? Small maintenance stuff. Well, the to do that switch and, and because you hold, need the hold and transfer switch and mm -hmm. plug it. How much that's going to be close to ten grand? Mm. That much? Oh. Just that whole setup over there is terrible. I don't know. I don't. I'm just hoping we do some projects down there that justify mm. a new pump station mm. before we put too much money into this one. Yeah. Uh, Louvre at Davis Street for the generator area there. It's about 1800 bucks just to get the Louvre to work. But, um, Which one's that? The generator at uh, Davis Glenn? Street. Oh, Davis? Yeah. That's probably the newest pump station, but whatever it is with the louver actuator. It's an automatic, so when the generator turns mm -hmm. on the air. <coughs> um, Don't they have one of those? That can't there? be lubricated or something? Or fixed or? We tried. What is it, a motor that operates yeah. it? Oh. Yeah. Um, 
we tried to do everything we could, take it apart, cleaned all the parts, lubricated it, it's just it won't function right. I think they quoted like 1800 bucks to fix that, which I thought was ridiculous. So Steve's looking to see if he can just find the parts we need, the parts, and replace it ourselves. But uh, the containment at Glen, if you do the math, it doesn't actually contain what we're supposed to by rule. Um, I should say by regulation. But, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. But. I think if you go look at it, it's got where the steps are. So where the steps are, it's kind of cut out. Is so that Glen Street? Yeah. So there's a high section where the railing is. Well, if you if if that high section where the railing is was straight across to where the steps are, I think you have the right containment. So I think when they designed it, they messed up somewhere. I think I've never been in that one. <clears throat> yeah. I doubt it, or else you would, you would know. Because ask Keith, he knows he went into it. Yeah, that's right, he set the alarm off. <laughs> yeah, love to know. Called me in a panic, because I didn't know we had an alarm in this. Yeah. And that is the loudest alarm you'll ever hear. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever been in that one. Yeah. Well, we'll set the alarm and go in there and try it. <laughs> Let me know, wait a minute, take a <clears throat> I don't remember. Anyway. Remember. <clears throat> it's like they cut out so that it was a level to walk in and you didn't have something to step over where the steps are to go down into the containment area. But by not having that part there, you don't actually have 110% containment for your chemicals. So Nobody's picked up on it yet. And they figured it was a newer design plant, so they figured it was designed correctly, but yeah, you no can do the math. It's no, I did the math. <clears throat> So at some point that may came up, might might come up, um, and this is another one that I don't know if I didn't read the whole report. I just went right to the part where I know we got to correct. Um, but she did question the eye wash and shower because we don't have a shower at any of the. Well, Glen Street does, but the primary and turbine don't have showers where the chemical contain uh, the chemicals are. So you're supposed to have an eye wash and a safety shower. Oh, pull chain with the yeah, but the yeah, problem there's all kinds of new regulations. Well, so I was about to say, to but tell. as he'll be able to tell you, there's new rules on that. Have warm water, and <clears throat> it has to be tempered water. And if it's tempered water, I know because I've gone through it. It's about thirty-five thousand dollars to get what you need. Really? Yeah, because your normal hot water heaters aren't. They don't produce yeah. enough to meet the requirements to have the tempered water for the time period. You can put a mixing valve on <clears throat> You can, but you can look into it. But I went through it because we did it in Stowe when we built a new plant there. and That's, that's just, for, just for the shower unit itself? Just mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, no they more make, cold water. Yeah, they make the, uh, the instant hot water ones, they don't meet the requirement. How many because they tried it at... Um, Cause Navian makes it one that's good. <clears throat> yeah, they tried it over here at. Uh, I think that's the new plumbing code, though. The new Woodbury Pond or whatever, the for Wilkinsonville mm -hmm. when they built that new pump station there, and I went in and I said, "Hey, I think you're gonna have an issue. You can't use that water here. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna meet the code for this." No, it's fine. So they went through it all. The plumbing inspector came in and said, "Oh, this doesn't meet the requirements," mm -hmm. and it, it was like. That goes under the plumbing code. Yeah. So how many gallons a minute does it have to produce? I forget what the flow rate is, but it, was, it wasn't it was so much the gallons per minute. It was the period of time that it has to run at that gallon per minute. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the because you're required to have... I know, that's what I said. I said, they these things that are so continuous. Gallons, yeah. and yeah. You know, like you go to all those camp and the camps up in Maine, yeah, they all have those Renaud, Renaud or whatever... Yeah. Heaters that you don't run out of hot water, it just yeah, keeps it going. Right, yeah. And you don't want 104 degrees going in your eyes, so no. you're gonna, it shouldn't have to produce. I, was, yeah. I forgot what the temperature <clears throat> has to be. Some of those Navian ones work, I mean, you can get seven gallons a minute <clears throat> or mm -hmm. more. Yeah, and I agree. Different sizes. And, I, and, and that's what I said. There's as long like, as that flame's going, that's where you get getting coming right, right around. But, and this was 12 years ago that. Yeah, that's yeah, probably. 12 good. years ago when I was dealing with it that. Maybe yeah. the, the new well, the new laws point of use has changed within yeah. the last couple of years. Well, I'm sure they didn't yeah. get any less stringent. They were yeah. probably more stringent. Yeah. 
But the new we're talking the about the new equipment. heaters are probably they've yeah, come uh, along yeah. far yeah, enough. Yeah, but I'm saying the eye washes that's mm. fairly you know within the last couple of years. But well, the tempered water was before I came here because as I ran into it when we were building the treatment plant and stuff. Really, mm. tempered water was even back then though. Yeah, okay. and that was oh eight. See, it's funny because I don't run into that around here, so I just yeah you know. <clears throat> yeah, you don't have any industry here. Right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but if something goes in, I'm going to have to, you know, figure it out. So I don't, but I know she commented on it. I don't know if she wrote it. She didn't put it in the table B. We didn't have any table A. And then she had a couple things in the recommendations. But Chris, we didn't have um, chemicals in those buildings before either. Right. Well, you've had the KOH oh, for a while. It's been a while, but. You've had yeah, the KOH for a long time. A long time. When it went in, they didn't have that tempered right, water requirement, but now they do, so. Anyway, that, just something to have on the radar at some point, mm -hmm. it may come up as an issue. Um, so, and they're talking about it, you know it's going to be coming down the line at some point, so it's good to plan for it. It will be, it will definitely trigger if we have to do any type of additional treatment. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. So if, if we hit anything like the PFOS. I don't know if you guys have heard anything about PFOS. <clears throat> so PFOS, PFOA, there's, there's 20 different compounds, but I think Massachusetts picked six. So there's six and they just passed the law like this month. And I think that's why they've got our sampling schedule locked up and I can't get it yet. I tried going on and accessing it and it's not accessible yet. <clears throat> I think they're finalizing and trying to figure out how they're putting it in the people's sampling schedule and when they're going to force people to sample. It's been talked about for a little while. It depends on what school of thought you go by. Um, you know, a lot of people are, oh, I want to get ahead of it and sample for it and find out so we know. But the kicker with that is if you sample and you know, you have to start putting treatment in. So you're not really getting ahead of mm -hmm. it. You're just triggering the requirements sooner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, it's going to be on the sampling schedule. I don't know when yet. So what it is is, and I can show you the sampling procedures. It's ridiculous what you have to do because you're measuring down to parts per billion. So it's parts per billion and the limit's 20. So 20 parts per billion combined over the six different contaminants that they're looking at. <clears throat> so it's 20 parts per billion. And the sampling procedure, you can't wear clothes that you use fabric softener on. You can't use anything Tyvek. You can't use anything that has Teflon. You, I don't know, there's a whole list of things. You can't wear boots that have Gore-Tex. You can't wear clothing that has Gore-Tex. You can't, uh, um. And what is the, per what, what is the? Contaminant, what is it? So the PFOS, it's polyfluoro, it's, it's a word this long. Yeah. <clears throat> but there's a whole bunch of different ones of them. But um, the only thing that has me nervous about it a little bit is it was found mostly in firefighting foams. And mobile pipeline used to, you know that little mm -hmm. circle mound that has the trees growing in it now? Well, that was their fire pit where they used to practice their <laughs> fire training on, which I'm guessing they probably use fire foams, which would contain that PFOS, PFOS, so. <coughs> um, <coughs> being kind of in the center of our wells makes me a little nervous, but um, like I said, we're going to be required to sample for it soon anyway. Yeah. So we'll know. Got to see just let's see. <coughs> Is what it is. We can't fight them. You know, no. just gonna do it. So, showers, the roof over the door, and some of the pointing and stuff at primary we already know about. That's already kind of figured in there anyway. Uh, Regrade behind primary. That's just. I don't know if it's been filled in over the years, but it's kind of up where the. The rain and, and water that accumulates right there is right where a windowsill is. On the building there, yeah. Yeah, so we should 
I don't know if it was from when they put the generator pad in or what, but that should be cut out and regraded yeah. so that the water's not on the wood rotted out. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Trees. I remember looking at that and I couldn't figure out why they put the pad there. Yeah. And then had the pad up so high and then causing it because I think the, it was eroding up the Yeah, I don't understand well. why they put I don't know if they yeah. thought maybe flooding, so they yeah. wanted it up a little higher. Yeah. I don't know. I would have put it further away and run the conduit and a little further. I mean, it's a matter of a few bucks at that point, but whatever. Trees at several locations. Um, there's a few that we need to get down. I'll work with John on that. Stumps at primary, I don't know what we want to do with those. Uh, we need to put hydrants in, one at primary, one at turbine, for the flow testing. Because right now, the flow testing, the way we do it isn't actually accurate because we're testing our flow based on what we're pumping and what he's reading on his meter, but the only where, only place that we can connect that's close to pump stations is the one in front of GBI. But while we're testing both stations, section from the pump station up till the cemetery, all those houses are actually live on it. So if anybody's using water, it's going to throw off our test. Mm -hmm. So we really should put a new hydrant in at Glen or at Turbine somewhere, and one somewhere in Primary, so we can do proper flow testing calibration. Uh, yeah. Another page. Yeah. There's only a few on this one. <coughs> the fire panel here. I gotta get something done with this fire panel. Um, it's been down because of a communication issue between that building down there and this building over here. <coughs> um, we had that company that originally put it in come in like three times and we paid them an awful lot of money. And then they said that the unit down at the main control panel down there, that the one in that building. They said it got ruined by the condensate from that air conditioning unit there. So they said that's the problem. So they replaced that whole panel and that didn't fix the problem. So they said, oh, well, it's something in your wiring, but that's hard to find. So we recommend you replace this with a radio one. And I'm like, I just paid you $8,000 to replace yeah. that. Now you want to rip it out and put a radio in. So I kind of got irritated with them. and. Yeah. So I've got a, I just got a card from someone the other day that does that kind of work out of Connecticut. So I'll see if they can come in and do something with it. But <clears throat> at some point that's going to bite us. So we've got to get that fire panel up and run right. All the lights and alarms and everything still go off, but mm -hmm. it doesn't call out like it should. Um, one of the things that we're looking at trying to do is put battery backups, like the things that you use for computers. <clears throat> at each of the stations, the water stations for the control power. Because when we have a power failure, all the controls shut down, which is the monitoring equipment and everything, mm -hmm. and just the time it takes to switch over to the generator and then power all these back up, you hit low alarms and it locks everything out so the station won't start back up mm -hmm. until someone physically comes out and resets everything. Mm -hmm. And you kind of want that set up so that if there's a power failure, it turns right back on and continues and plus when you have a power failure you shut the power down and that's actually how we get the system to run sometimes if we want to run it when it's not calling for it yet yeah. if there's a fire or something we'll trip it so that it starts up so that the fire department has more flow <clears throat> so they're not just relying on the tank pressure and everything so we'll start everything up but if you shut the power off and turn it back on it tells the whole system up oh, tank level was low so everything has to start so Anytime you have a power failure at primary, everything's all automatically going to come back on and start up and all the stations are going to start up and run whether you need it to or not. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Until it goes, so it could, you know, our, our off is 47 feet and our on is 35 feet. So if it's at 46 feet, everything's going to turn on until it gets back up to 47 feet or you really don't want it to turn on for another 10 feet or whatever. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so if we put a small UPS in there that should keep everything running and you won't have those dropouts and we'll keep the alarm system running for a longer period. I don't have any idea yet 
The batteries themselves won't be expensive, but a matter of tying all the electrical in to get your control and power all running through that might mm -hmm. turn into something. I think the police probably had an issue with that. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. The batteries are dead. They had a <coughs> when the power goes out to control everything. All the oh, they stuff. lose all their stuff. They have a battery backup to, just for that, just for that in between. Yeah. And the generators kick on. <coughs> and the power goes out. Oh, yeah. I guess the batteries the initial when the batteries were dead or something. No. Everything shut down. <laughs> all right. Well, that's pretty much that. <coughs> so that stuff. All right, so I'm going to go through. Separate I think, all this out. Yep, separate all that out. And then I think a lot, some of the stuff that you're talking about in there, it's going to be prioritize that as well as the capital thing you're talking about in here. Yep. And try to see what. I mean, a lot of this little stuff, some of it's little, some of it might be. Yeah. I mean, Sand Trap, obviously, that's not little. That's a huge project. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, like there's louvers and stuff. There's money already built in. Mm. It's just on. Right, we have, I mean, there's operating and maintenance that we still have to. Right account for. But some of them are things that seem like they're little, but they could turn into yeah. a significant expense. So, but before long, it's been tied up between the holidays and everything else going on right now in the early budget season this year. <coughs> um, Which is good. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I prefer it. I just got to be ready for it a little more next year. Um, but I've got... I know, I think that all the other departments, like February, I think they, they're, they're, they're done. They, you know, they have to have it in, so. so. <clears throat> yeah. Which is, which is, uh. But I think those other departments are kind of, there's not as much going on as. No, we there's a lot of. And a lot of variables down here right. that aren't as easy as, a, you know, they've got salaries and their yeah. normal you know, office supplies. And right, yeah. It's not like this. Stuff that's really pretty predictable. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, then you have your typical few uh, capital projects. But yeah. Well, I like to be a little, <clears throat> little bit ahead of the game. Just for budget, well, I agree. It stresses projects. me out every year that we're... Right. I I'm, I'm juggling between crap. i got to go to the finance committee, and we haven't even talked about it yet. I know. And that's what I was doing. I'm like, oh, <clears throat> I'm trying to look into nothing. There's no time mm -hmm. to really get... So it's like, all right, well, just leave that number, and then we'll see. You know, I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I like to have it pretty well to get it. So we know where we are, know where we sit, what it costs to operate, you know, things that then try to plan out. When I started having meetings with these guys and we're trying to put together, that's where, that's where a lot of this stuff came from. I just haven't got it all taken on the computer yet. Mm -hmm. This is just stuff that needs to be done around here. And mm -hmm. Once I get it all into a spreadsheet and who's going to be assigned responsibility for that specific task or whatever, probably just start bringing this to the commissioner's meeting and I'm not going to go through a line item by line item. Yeah. I'll give you guys yeah. copies and then if you have questions at the next one or if while you're sitting there going through it, hey, what's this about? And, yeah. I mean, stuff I think that'll keep you guys a little more in the loop on some of the stuff that's going on. So. Yeah, as long as, like I said, as long as it's getting done, that's the main thing because when things get put off, put off, put off, <clears> and then you're running to a... Well, it always worked well with know. them the weekly meetings that I used yeah. to have, but like I said, I started out with Dave and Ray, and the two times I tried, they both almost came over the table at each other, and I was like, yeah, this is, and it's a small department, I can talk to each and individually, but mm. it just works better if we're all on the same page, so. It does, it actually helps things out. <coughs> just, and the staff we have now works well that way. The, the staff I came into was not, <laughs> was not yeah. compatible, so <coughs> it was better to keep them separate. <clears throat> all right, that's all I got. One other thing that may, be, may impact the budget, which I would bring up, would be uh, I always get people always talk to me about billing four times a year because they have. I that, get the same thing. They get the people say, you know, <coughs> I understand, you know, save some money by doing it, but it's, it's just it's a big <laughs> money to come up with, and, and it's every six months. They get a bill for a twelve hundred dollars or a thousand. I've brought this up numerous times over the years I've been here, and try, <coughs> trying to come up with something that would work. Yeah, I think at this point our best bet is to put radios, is to move forward as part of this, and we'll put it in the budget. And it's just the billing part isn't as bad as. I mean, it, she's wasted a lot of time on the billing program. That this new news crap is just ridiculous. How much. 
time consuming it is just for the stuff that you got to do. And by that, the paperwork. The paperwork. Jesus. I mean, everything you do with it is just so much more than it used to be. I mean, I think. When we give rebates, we used to have a little swap of paper. Yeah. Right? It was one page that had three of the same thing. Right, and yeah. We just yeah. Cut and now the yeah. thing is yeah. probably a quarter of an yeah. inch thick. But the, one for of the, the same exact yeah. thing. One of the good things I think is with the Munis, if there is a good side to it, is that, like, I've asked her for some reports. And she it definitely. In, and going in. But the old one created those reports. You just had, all you had to do was call Danny and figure out, and his, his created a crap load of reports. Yeah. This does do a lot more. And it's tied together with genes, and it's mm -hmm. tied together with so more real, things that's real time. Exactly. Yeah. So, it definitely does have more functionality. It's just a matter of getting Munis to have it programmed correctly to give us a report that's useful. Right. And, and, the, and the guns, I think, work well because now you can just they can just plug them in, mm -hmm. goes right in. Doesn't nothing has to be manually. But we could have did that with Danny's program too. Could have. We just didn't have the guns at that time. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> but Danny's program would have did that as well. So it just automatically, there's no more, you know, manually load. It's all boom, 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 and it's in, done, right. generated. Build. No more right. transcriptional errors. So it's, it's the, the reading, but the so, problem, I think, with the reading was the cost of the software, wasn't it? The, mm -hmm. the, no, we've already bought all that. The uh, We've bought everything. It's now, I know you guys always complain that we're too small to go to the radio read, because but it the radios are a cost per unit. So whether you have a million or you have 1,100, they have to buy a million of them. We have to buy eleven hundred of them. Right. It's. No, oh, I'm, I'm I'm in favor of that. I think <coughs> that's what we did. We've been doing that up at uh, North Villages. Anytime you put new meters on, put the right. Put now the when yeah. we do new. Yeah. And it's all included in the cost of doing it in the beginning. Right. But we've got to start working on the old ones, mm -hmm. and get get the old. So, so. That's the only hang up for me right now because it takes, a month, of almost full time reading just to get it done now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we don't have the staff for it. And what it would cost That's you... We, once we get we get, another, get the labor, get the, that'll help out a lot. Right, but even so, you get another labor, we still have enough work for everyone to do mm -hmm. regardless of this. The cost that it costs for the time that you commit to it, it will pay for itself to do radios. And if we get the radios, it's essentially one day. Yeah. You can have the whole town read. Yeah. I was under the impression. I remember talking about this a while ago and asked him about that. I thought it took, if you had, if there was two two guys reading, it would take a week if you did everything. Two guys it was would do two it. Two weeks for two guys, but it was yeah. I think two weeks was the fastest we've ever done it. Um, and it was a little more than two guys. We had two guys doing it pretty much the whole time, and then Lee did some and I did some yeah. running around. But so what about? <coughs> I like the idea we should go towards working towards that radio read I mean that's a good idea I would say that if we figure out what the problem areas are for manual physical reading mm -hmm. we hit those with radios first mm -hmm. and then the rest of it you know like I mean nobody else agrees with how I did it but you know I did all of Main Street in 45 minutes because I took my kids mountain bike and I came in here and I had the <laughs> I had the reader and I just Road, I rode through people's yards, but you know it's a pedal bike. I'm not ripping their yards. Yeah. I zipped through. The only problem I had was Cahill's, because me thinking I'm 18 again, I said, oh, I'm going to go down Cahill's steps. And I didn't realize how steep they were. And when I hit, I'm like, oh, crap, that's Main Street. And I <laughs> flipped off. I'm like, oh, crap, luckily nothing's coming. But Who, what was that? Cahill's. Mikey's. Oh, Mike's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he's got his yeah. little steps yeah. in the front. Yeah. I'm like, ah, that's the quickest spot. I'm just going to shoot yeah. down that. And, yeah, don't do that. Go around that driveway. But. <laughs> the, uh, so I've had about, people ask me about, about the same thing. Yeah, I've had it in, a lot more so lately than... Mm -hmm. Well, I've always been under that because I yes. had that, that same system that we ran into the hot water thing. Primarily since we went up on the rates mm -hmm. of was a couple of years ago. Since then, that's... Yeah. You know, it's a... Well, you bills want like those like mine. It's almost $5,000. Yeah. Yeah, I think mine's almost it's almost six. I think. Yeah, all of a yeah but you two understanding your budget, but yeah, ninety yeah. percent of America don't. I know, I know. Can't budget and don't understand right. that they need to think of that. So, but the I, I guess the other thing was didn't we talk about not necessarily having to go physically read the. And that was the other thing. I've come up with a estimate. few different. Right. So yeah. I think I really think that would be good if we can if we can. Come up well, with we just need to have the conversation as to whether you want actual reads. I would say suggest at this point because we don't have all the radio readers and everything. It's just do actual twice a year, 
and then estimate. estimate. Twice. Yeah. Twice well, in between, so they get picked. But you got to make sure the estimate is in between. The uh, it has to work on the fiscal. Fiscal, <clears throat> right? So the the spring bill has to be a, an actual. Actual, right? But there's two ways you can do it too. You can do, and I, I had thought about this, and I think I had mentioned it before. Is we know you've got all the fees, your base rates, and although we're out of all the other fees now, all we have is those two base. So yeah. kind of it's kind of doesn't work as well anymore. I was going to say when you had those fees, you could have took all your fees and your base rates that you're charging and bill those in one cycle. So it's not a usage. So you get your usage bills twice a year, and then your fee bills twice a year, and it would offset it a little bit. But yeah. it doesn't well, work as well now that those that fees might, are. No, off, I mean, so. some of the fees are coming off. So. All the fees are off now. All the fees are off now. Okay. I think it should be broke out. So that could be the debt that I that would spur a lot of. It would, and uh, and that's confusion and <coughs> and uh, complaining as well. So you can do estimates, but that could at least it would be get you know if you explain to them while it's. <coughs> Historically, you know, this is what it is. Yes, it's going to be a twenty. They get pick up with an actual, and it's going to be a variable. It's not going to be a perfect scenario. Right, there's going to be, you know, there'll be a perfect. handful every year that. Well, we went to Florida right. for six months and we didn't, you know, they well, get we estimated you, yeah. and you know, we thought you might have used, but yeah, okay, we owe you money back now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, we'll get there'll up. be a handful of abatements. That yeah, we'll get picked up on the final, on the on the on the on the off cycle. We'll right. get an actual. <coughs> right, so. but if if it was like a six month period, we estimated. Say they left after the second billing. Yeah. Well, the third billing is going to be an estimate. The fourth will be and an the actual. The fourth would be an actual, but if we estimated and they didn't use water that whole time, you overbuild them the third and they're still not up to that in the fourth. Mm -hmm. you, oh, I see the difference. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, yeah. that would be an abatement situation. There'll be a handful There'll of those. Be, that's yeah. it. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not opposed to it. I've been, I've been pushing that since I've been here to yeah. at least go to quarterly billing just to... And it's going to generate. It's going to cost a little more to do that. So I mean, obviously, it's going to cost. No, it's all going to cost. Of, right. The biggest. Well, no, it's not only just the cost of the mailing. It's the cost of the, the reading it too. Yeah. Well, but that's it's where gonna, it's going. Well, still doing two <coughs> readings a year. It's totally. It's going to be an estimate, but mm. so it's more office on the on the two. It's. Estimate. It's going to be on her. That's. Yes. It's a yeah. lot of extra work for her, just based on what it takes every time to mm -hmm. right. to get a billing cycle done. But I think I mean we put it off and we talked about it not you know put it off and talk, but it's getting kind of a lot more people do it. Yeah. you know because they're getting the bills are going up and everything else mm -hmm. they get a big bill like that like oh god you know at least if it was if they or if they had a leak you know they'd get yeah. picked up it would get picked get up picked in the, up sooner the, the, I had one person tell me that you know oh, it was leaking I didn't know, I know. they get, didn't get picked up until six well months. that was my biggest push for the. Uh, the fixed base one, yeah, and that we can get readings every day. Yeah, but they I mean, they killed the us with that right. twenty thousand. Right. If it wasn't for the twenty thousand dollar a year thing, that would have been a no brainer. Go for yeah. it. It was sixty thousand dollar initial investment. Yeah, well worth it for what you get. But yeah. yeah, the twenty thousand dollar a year killed and, it. And like you say, that week I have a week in one of my apartments, and you know, I might build one from fifteen hundred to three thousand. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. 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 And if I had, you know, quarterly, I would have picked, picked it up, up sooner, yeah. you know. Because I always look at mine, too. <laughs> yeah. And it's that easy, was a killer. It's mine's easy to do. Again this year. Yeah. And you get people that put new fixtures in, and they're like, I just put all new fixtures, none of mine's leaking. And that happened on Main Street, the one that we abated, yeah. and it turned out we should have built more than we did. Yeah. So I really would <laughs> like to, I really strongly would like to get that, you know, to move into that just for the, and there is going to be, a, you know, like I said, the fee that goes along with that. And I I even had people say, well, you know, we'd rather pay, you know, an extra fifty dollars. Right. I'd I'd rather pay more to break it up than in a, in a bill <laughs> than have one big you know one big bill. Well, I can pay. I can guarantee you that that is the case almost across the board because look at how many payment plans we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of them they they're explained that you're going to get interest and you're going to get the demand fee. Mm -hmm. it, so essentially, that's the fee that they're paying extra. Yeah. And they don't care about the fee if it gets broken down into four or five payments. Yeah. I mean, some towns, some towns bill monthly. They have a but it's a, a lot of them do. fixed base. You know, they get the oh, yeah. and they can just talk, you know just bill <laughs> monthly bill. But they get all they do is just sit at the desk and they, yeah. they get you know yeah. hit print. Oh, and it, you know does all yeah. the bills. Route three bills today. Yeah. yeah. But obviously we're not at that point. I think we need to 
Yeah, it'd be ideal to just go look at the four billing cycles. If we can work on that, I think that would be a substantial help to the Any year, private public. water companies build monthly, typically. Well, it's cash flow. Exactly. Whereas we have an annual budget to meet, right. so we don't care if we get it all now or right. June right, yeah. 20th. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> But yeah, private I, industry that could be that could be borrowing money to get through prices. Exactly. I need, need the revenue. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not going to oppose you on that. I I've been trying to come up with a plan to do that forever. Whether it be the two or you send them out, I even thought of doing it like the tax bills, where you know you've got your red bill and we attach a second bill that's due in three months. We could do that. You know what I mean? Because then you're... Right, you get two and one, and then put the estimate right to get the actual. Right. Right. You do an actual, and here's your estimated for your next bill. Yeah. Due in three months from now. Yeah. yeah. But then you're back to the... you got to make sure it works out for the fiscal year. So we could do it with just... A, it, the last one's going to be an actual. Right. Yeah. We can do it where we have to only have two readings a year then. Yeah. The same as we have right. now. So would that work if you did that? If you did an actual estimate, actual, no, you kind of do an estimate for the Say, first one. The first one, well. Yeah, that'd be an estimate. Depends on when you send them out. Because you could do it where. The first one would have to be estimated in order to collect it. <clears throat> right. The first one would be, yeah. I mean, well, if you send your actual and estimate, actual estimate, but you would have to have it on the off cycle so that your your actual would have to be the last the one year, right year. So but you could estimate the following bill it'd be the next fiscal year right that's what's in the first one right the first bill coming out of fiscal year estimated, estimated. Yeah. <clears throat> we'd have to sit down on the yeah. calendar and figure yeah. it out but yeah make sure it's <coughs> the same month as the taxes <laughs> that's what i was saying it's not so much that <laughs> The bills are so much worse than the water. It's just yeah. everything else is adding up so much. Your taxes mm -hmm. are up so much. Your, just everything's killing you nowadays. Yeah. Well, my water bill is pretty close to my tax bills. <laughs> oh, my, my tax bills are. I was going to say. Although this year, yeah, this year they went skyrocketing. <clears throat> my, my water bills are cheaper, a lot cheaper than my tax bills, are like thirty grand. Yeah. That much? Yeah. That, well, I could be wrong. I didn't figure it out. <laughs> I'm not opposed to that. We'll just. I think we probably need all three here to. Yeah. Hash, yeah. hash out which which direction you want to go yeah. in. I think ultimately, if we make it, I mean, we get once we get the staff situation squared away, then the radio thing can go quick. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I would just. I've asked everybody that reads, write down your biggest problem areas. What what do you hate reading the most because it's a pain? We'll target those areas for radio spread. That seems to me to be all the like Eagle View where you got the all the mass yeah. numbers right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did. But Yeah, is that all radio? Well, I went both ways. I'm like Eagle View. You get a lot. Although, you get a lot well, quick. Done, yeah, I could have done you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You pick right something up. like U Street. Well, yeah, yeah. So I guess right. I tell you. Glenn and you, you, that's a long yeah. walk. Yeah, 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 yeah right. You know, yeah. Eagles, yeah. you you park the truck and you just go through the whole thing and you're done. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, you hit like yeah, well, U I'll Street or, or yeah. You know, but it still would be nice to pull chug, it's pull it to something like Eagle View and you pick. Oh yeah, I know. Go in there. You're done. You're done. Yeah. You picked up. 40 units. Mm -hmm. You might just be able to do that one loop and you pick up all of that. Yeah. yeah. And actually, to be honest with you, the Eagles View, based on the census radios, you can almost pick up all the Eagles View off of uh, Franklin Street. Mm -hmm. You might not even really? have to go in there and just drive by and you might be able to catch it all. No, even really? the low portion? You could. The bill is in the back? Yeah, it all depends on elevation. That you could also <clears> actually, <throat> it's just a matter of driving through town to see what you pick up. Because you might pick that up coming down Main Street. Because it's up here, and you might catch it mm -hmm. coming down the hill. It's just a matter of driving through town to see when you pick up signals. Yeah. Because I know the system that I did out in Stowe was 
you couldn't get them if you were sitting in front of their house, but you're on two roads over, you're picking up the radio off of that house. Oh, yeah. Just that was when they first came out with them. The technology's ten times better now. Yeah, I definitely think we should move towards a <clears throat> like said, move towards that radio read with, with the with the truck with, or vehicle that has that. And then well, there's two different things on the radio, and that's where we would look at benefits as to how much time we're wasting with employees or or whatever. But the radio read that we have, it's a handheld and you, you gotta drive through and, and kinda work it a little bit while you're doing it. But I know Whitensville has the same stuff and they bought the truck mounting unit. So that you just drive through town and you don't do a thing and it just grabs them all. Mm -hmm. so it would take them to do this town if we had all radios It'd probably take them two hours and they'd have the whole town run. Whereas it's probably going to take us a full day or two to do them all with the one that we have. Yeah, <clears> Which is still, that's a difference between a yeah. $5,000 unit and a $25,000. Well, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the, <clears> a day or two, I'm fine with that. I mean, right, yeah. Yeah, me too. That's what I said. I'm, I'm good with the handheld. Uh, yeah. I don't need to up to a yeah. truck unit. Let's get to the, my thought is getting. Move the floor, we don't need to take you know <clears throat> massive steps. Right. I mean, if the cost is relatively to do it, but yeah, let's be realistic and focus on but the this price should come down on those truck units. And yeah. I would say, if you got a truck mounted unit and put it in Steve's truck, if he did all those stations, he'd pick up 90% of the town just doing his around. Yeah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> but like you said, every, every meal that gets put in now gets that put on anyway, so. <clears throat> And it's getting directly billed, so there's no right cost to what it's cost getting, to it. It's getting put on and getting billed as it gets it get put in. Yeah. Versus the expense coming buying, you know, yeah, so. a couple thousand that we need to get. But I think the other discussion that was when we talked about this was getting all the old meters. So we were, the idea was to get up, get everything up to date on the yeah we've got the meter change outs <clears> and then any new meters getting put in. Make sure they have that radio. I want to say we're at less than ten badgers left in the system, and those were, those are ones that we can't shut the water off. So it's a matter we got to replace the service lines, or at least from main to curb, and put it in curb in so we can shut it off in order to change the meter. Mm. So it's between that and there's two in town that have the meter horns. Have you ever seen the meter horns? So it's if you've got a your water line's this way in your house mm -hmm. instead of this way. Well, it comes up and you, you have it cut out, and the water comes up through the meter and then back around and back into your house. Oh, yeah, we got some of them in there. <clears throat> we have wow. two of those. Um, but I've already bought the new meter horns because, unfortunately, those meter horn ones were the old 5 8 meters, so we don't have those meters. Mm -hmm. And you can't just replace the meter coupling, so you have to replace the whole thing with the new size meter coupling. Yeah. So we've bought those. It's just a matter of getting scheduled to get in and get those done now. So that takes care of those two, and then it's just like it's less than ten that we can't actually physically shut the water off. So it's either you buy the freeze unit. They've got freeze kits. I'm sure you've seen them. You wrap it around. You have nitrogen. You freeze the line. It gives you. <laughs> 20 minutes to work with if you trust me. <laughs> <coughs> there's no there's no valve on the inside? There is no work. No. It's oh, old, old gate valves or something. Yeah. <clears throat> so those those are the ones that we're down to is the ones that have gate valves that won't work or won't shut off and the curb won't shut off. But if it's just a gate valve in the house we mm. shut the curb off, we shut the curb off mm. and change it. Yeah. If it's both, that's what you shut it off and change the valve, yeah. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> there you got a problem both both out. <coughs> it's the old iron services. Anything that has yeah. an iron service, the, the out the curb at the road won't shut because it's jammed up and the valve in the house mm -hmm. is so old and it's iron service, you know, it's mm -hmm. 70, 80 years old. <coughs> There's, like I said, only a handful left that we got to get. And then I think mm -hmm. the only other thing would be is maybe you, did, you said you talked to Doug, so maybe... Uh, just get him on board for a Yeah, I just I, I told him today I'll get back to him tomorrow if you guys are in agreement. Yeah, I think we're going to. I think we should. <clears throat> I agree. 
there's a lot of things. You got to hold the dub. Yeah, there's a lot of things on the plate that I'd like to. Yeah. That that we have to address. That needs to have some planning involved. Financial. Can we have Dave in the meeting or? Yeah, I mean, well, he's going well, to. We don't really he, need him in for the meeting. No, we don't just need him for the meeting. Just yeah. get him on. Get him. I'll just agree to have him start the race. Yeah, that's right, too. Yeah, just right. <clears throat> but I need to tell him he's got to come sit with me and spend more time because usually he doesn't talk to me much. He deals with Gene, yeah. does, does all stuff, and then he's ready to present to you guys. But he needs to understand what improvements, what things are. I need, right, right. I need these in. These are going to be reoccurring every year because right. we're going to start a rotation of doing each pump, so factor in another 10000 a year for this. Right. These are going to be one-time things, but we've got 10 of them, so over the next 10 years, we're going to have this many that... Right, so so much bang on so much going to retained earnings. Yeah. Right. Just for playing. He should go down here and talk to you first. He should sit with me and go through everything before, yeah. before all the I mean, he has to know what, because he doesn't know what, yeah. what you're talking right. about. No. What we talk about from... But a lot of his stuff, he just yeah. grabs from Jean's, yeah. you know, all of her records, and he takes, you know, the last two or Which three that's years. probably 90% of it, but... Right. But there's things that are not... There's still a lot of stuff that he's got up. There's some of the little things that are, all right, this is going to be recurring, and these were not. We mm -hmm. had them in because we had a specific thing to take yeah. care of, so... <clears throat> Yeah, just get him on board anyway. All right. I'll make that call tomorrow. And then should we should we schedule uh, uh, another budget another meeting? budget meeting two weeks, just to stay up on. Yeah. yeah. Find out if Keith's going to be available because I don't know how many meetings you want to have without all of you here. Yeah, no, I want. <clears throat> I want to get make sure Keith's all three of us here and that. But if he could go through and. I'll break it out. Yeah. Break it out, and then could you, could you email us a uh, copy so we can kind of go through. It's nice coming into a meeting where you had it, you know, right. had the chance yeah, to look at stuff. To review it. Yeah. Versus trying to, you know, we get an overview tonight where, where it's going, but then break it out and itemize what you're looking at. And you can make a meeting. It's just. Yeah, but I don't. I, for some reason, I thought he had like two weeks worth of stuff. He wasn't going to be around. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Uh, I, don't know. I thought it was a week for this, and then he's got another week somewhere else. <coughs> oh, it could be. No, it doesn't. Could be. Yeah. I was just verifying. Sent me a message last night. It said, "What kind of stove do we have at the camp?" And then he said, "Never mind. I already figured it out." That's the only time I talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't even talk to him. So, all right. All right. Close the meeting. Uh, motion to adjourn at. Uh, what do we got there? 10, 10, 10, 37. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Oh, baby, bye. Bye.